It's unacceptable, Hairline. We are talking off air. Welcome, folks. PWT Pro Wrestling Vibes Podcast. We're, of course, talking wrestling before we get on the show, and we're like, shit, we should probably just hit record because we're going in on yeah, things that would be great for the show, and we're just talking about them. Um, it is unacceptable, Hairline. For those of you uh, just tuning in, um, all of you are just tuning in. As in but, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> everyone. Uh, Fuego Del Sol uh, was released by AEW, and we were just talking about it's fucked how Tony just like tucks guys away to ROH and lets their contracts expire, and then you don't hear about them. And we said at least in WWE, when they future endeavor you, it's like a big deal, and they tweet your name out, and fucking people go, oh, they're released, and this could be a big signing, and at least there's like hype around it. Tony just like silently stops talking to people and lets them go in AEW. And, uh, but enough yeah. about that, guys. Um, we don't know the real story on that. I, we were just talking shit. And uh, another edition of Pro Wrestling Times no, Podcast. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Listen, yeah. That is childish, man. Everyone shits on Vince, but at least Vince has the fucking decency to tell you. Like, okay, so this Bego Del Solo guy could have been looking for work, you know what I'm saying, elsewhere. Right. Just time rather than fucking banking on AEW. I don't know, man. That's just fucking childish. And, and like, oh, if... Video, do that. Go ahead. Fucking, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good. Like, besides Big Swole, who else has done that to you? Um, I believe uh, Blue Pants, Leva Bates. Um, he, oh, God! He did that to... Uh, he, there's other names, you know, if we sat here and looked through them, um, there are other people. Joey Janela. He was like, yo, uh, we were just talking about Joey Janela off pod, and he's a great Twitter follow, and like, he... We were saying he really started taking his work and his body seriously, and he's doing his best work now. Hairline was just saying, and uh, we'll, we'll and, let's get and, uh, into it. Bill here, yeah. Hairline here. Yeah. We yeah. gotta hit you with the intro line. Sorry, guys, but anyway, we'll, we're just getting right into the show. Yeah, today. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow us at Pro Wrestle Times on Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, check us out on YouTube at Pro Wrestle Times. Check us out on um, on uh, Instagram, TikTok at Pro Wrestle Times, and check us out uh, our Clips channel at Pro Wrestle Clips. Anywho, um, we were talking about Joey Janela. He's doing his best work now, and he really started taking his body seriously at the end dying days of his AEW run. And I think he's another guy that was just like, you know, Tony just kind of stops talking to you, and then you're released. I believe the same thing happened to Sonny Kiss. It, son, I might be wrong about that one. But, uh, yeah, so at least we were just saying, at least when Vince lets you go, he goes, future endeavor roderick strong let's say and then it's like a big deal and people right. go, like if aew had a went uh we released um fuego del sol and we wish him the best in his future endeavors at least then all the marks would go oh fuego and fuego dos and wwe let's see it da, 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 you know imagine a, a yeah imagine a fuego dos versus a el generico match in wwe <laughs> well like would it Cody for sure like get his boy over? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I mean, Cody was, was teaming with, with him. Yeah, yeah. Cody was. Yeah. That's who I'm referring yeah. to is Fuego Dos, right? Like uh, Cody would. Oh, um, okay, yeah, yeah. Would would be I, on I, dark I, for those of you who didn't watch Dark and Dark Elevation. Cody Rhodes would team with Fuego Del Sol, and he would call himself Fuego Dos on Dark and Dark Elevation, and they'd fight jobber teams, and he'd sell for these guys, and let Fuego get his tornado DDT in. Right. But he fully worked the gimmick like Cody never pretended he was. It was clearly him, but he never like ever did any little Cody thing like he just perfectly was pretending to be this luchador. And uh, yeah, I th- I love that shit. I'm a mark for that shit. It's weird in the 2K games, too. If you play the storylines like the WWE games hairline, they put in yeah. El Ordinario. Like in, I think, 2K22 or 2K23, you play the storyline where you feud with Sami Zayn and then he and then uh, a, a mysterious luchador named El Ordinario corners you or you wrestle <laughs> him in a match. And it's not generico because obviously Sammy would never sign that name over to them. You know, like that's his fallback plan. If anything goes south in WWE, you know, they'll let him do that with Excalibur in AEW generico. You know, that would happen in two minutes. Yeah. Like and uh but uh, in the games, they use El Ordinario, and I just think that's cute or whatever. But 
Anyways, enough about that. We don't even have the full story. We could be wrong. Like maybe Fuego was in touch with Tony Khan, but it is just fucked up. It's like at least give him some hype so he gets booked on the indies and gets a little a little pay bump. Everyone, no one even heard about his release, dude. Like you got me stressing out over that Sami Zayn leaving WWE shit. My brain started firing. I was like, oh, that no, would never happen, dude. Leave? I know, yeah, I know, but you, you, you. I pretty much lost everything you said after that because I, I was just like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's way too over. Uh, speaking, sorry. speaking of WWE guys, um, we're gonna review SmackDown right now. Hairline. Let's get into some fucking SmackDown, dude. Um, WWE has been rolling. Money in the Bank is coming next weekend. We're going to review Forbidden Door on this show as well. Um, But Money in the Bank's coming, and I'm super. I was telling Hairline Off Pod, I'm really excited for it. None of the matches, other than I did see one. I did see one match, actually, where I said I know who the winner is going to be for this one. Um, Let me just read it to you quickly. Uh, what is it? Gunther? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Rousey and Baszler versus Liv Morgan and Raquel. Rousey and Baszler are going to win that match. We know for sure. Wouldn't that be a crazy Excuse sport? Me. It would be, but all it would do is bury yeah. all of those belts and yeah, it would, oh, yeah, yeah. And and it would bury, bury what Ronda and Shayna are doing. And we'll get into it, but Ronda's been selling her ass off and, and putting these girls yeah, over in these matches, bro. And this is what she wants to do. Um, It was leaked dirt sheet shit a while back uh whatever i don't even need to plug who said it but uh ronda rousey wants to <laughs> <laughs> like literally no um ronda rousey wants to help establish this tag division she wants to have a run with Shayna baszler i think i've said it on the show before and then they're gonna feud at wrestlemania turn on each other ronda's gonna take off for a while and have some babies so anyways that's the only match where i go that's predictable every other fucking match on money in the bank. I have no clue who's going to win. And in contrast in, right. um, in the new Japan pay-per-view, we watched forbidden door. I mean, we'll get into it. It got us more hype for new Japan than AEW. And really every match we knew who was going to win every fucking match, except for maybe the Chris Jericho match, but that match was awful, but we'll get into all that. <laughs> oh, hold on. Whoa. How dare you just got to keep it G baby. I'm I Phil, baby. Know. I think I'm a top. I'm top Phil. Out. Just kidding. Well, I'm here with you guys. Let's. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> let's review SmackDown. So, hey. uh, where was SmackDown live from? Hairline. I'm forgetting here. They were. What city were they in? I got no idea. I always ask, and you <laughs> never know. And it's always me who knows if either of us know. You know what I mean? So, um, either I, way, yeah, yeah. I'm for sure you're just gonna start writing it down, bro. <laughs> yeah, because I ask every <laughs> show, every and then you don't know, and then I know. They were in Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Got they right on enormous. time. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh. so the show kicks off. Uh, the Bloodline Civil War continues. Roman Reigns' yeah, Civil War. betrayal, I guess, of the... I love how they're marketing it like that. You know, like it's fucking Iron Man and Captain America. Civil War. Yeah, fucking love WWE when they're doing shit like this. So uh, they recap all the events. They recap them laying fucking Jimmy and Jay laying Roman out. And then uh, I didn't like I don't know. I didn't really like how Jay was all like going to do the bloodline spiel. But then like, rem- oh, and then they kind of Jimmy's like, chill, bro. And then yeah. he had to do that was kind of go- like yeah. too much. It's like, nah, just we we're all with you. You know, we're all with you and through every step of this, dude. Like, you don't have to do that but uh i'm not hating on this at all like these guys are great and it was great it was a great start to the show what do uh what do you think man what did you think about this segment what do you think about roman reigns he's for sure beating the three thousand day or whatever like he's for sure holding this belt mania 40 yeah so go ahead what did you think about this and the return of the uso penitentiary right uso's baby face is fucked we haven't seen these usos in a long 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 time Fuck yeah. Long, long time. Long. Um, yeah, man. Um Yeah, they basically said they still love Roman, but fucking Paul Heyman fast. So, you know, that's where we're at with them. Right. I don't, uh, yeah, it was basically what you said. All of this was enjoyable, but he didn't need to start with the bloodline shit. I feel like, you know, why beat that dead horse? 
like you said, we're with you, you know. And then after this, we're the, you're going to have to jump in with the backstage segments. I don't got those. I got the match card here. Yeah, no, next up, we went into Rey Mysterio versus LA Knight. Right, so yeah. this match, yeah, this match was originally advertised as LA Knight. Yeah, versus Butch versus Santos yeah. Escobar. But then um, I guess Rey Mysterio, it, they did that match instead. I don't know why, but uh, either way, Okay, Ray comes out. Of course, he's a legend. LA Knight comes out. Yeah, he's fucking over his shit as usual, dude. He's just getting big pops um, from every fucking crowd. Everyone knows his shit. They do. It's like literally when The Rock goes, it just takes me back to that. People want the Attitude Era. LA Knight says Attitude Era. If you plugged him in there, he'd be uh, to any era, bro. He's just, he gets it. And his shit when The Rock is like the millions and millions, you know, that is what he's doing. It's not a forced thing. It's not like um, right. just, it's not some goofy catchphrase. Like, I don't know, like Seth Rollins. It's not like his entrance music, like even Seth Rollins. Yeah, no, he, it's ha- natural. he yeah. has his chant, but it's Rollins music that people are singing with. It's not like he got some catchphrase over. It's not like Seth freaking Rollins is like, really, it's like kind of a cute right. name. We all kind of poke at, but LA Knight, Yeah. Let me talk to you. Yeah. They all know his shit. And it's, I don't know. He's the best in the, he's hey, the man, best. It's so over right now. Yeah. It's and it, so fucking and he knows how to work these legends. He knows how to work that. We seen him work before WrestleMania. These two guys work. He knows how to work um, legends. He knows how to work the young guys. He knows how to work. Everybody. He's just, I don't know. Give him his flowers while he's still here, man. Give him his flowers while they're due. And Knight defeated Mysterio. Um, great match. Would you, would you make of it? Yeah. Yeah, man. He hit him with the fucking, uh, the blunt force trauma. And that Great finish. Fucking, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> there was some aftermath, there, some afterbirth. Uh, he went to go jump Ray, and then Escobar, 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 <laughs> Escobar mm-hmm. ran out like a goddamn mark. You know what I'm saying? Doing the whole, oh, Ray, you're on my side. <laughs> more of that shit, man. More of the LWO. Exactly, man. I and and yeah, more LWO is cool with me. Um, it's weird though. Like, was Butch not there? I wonder why they changed that from a triple threat. But either way, up next, well, because he. he Go ahead. Um, Butcher, Butcher's in the Butcher's uh, wasn't he on Raw for the fucking oh the Money in the Bank ladder like, match? Oh you're yeah, right. yeah, he was already yeah 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 he was already in travel yeah yeah he was right. already traveling. Um, okay, yeah yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, so uh, after that, uh, Solo Sokoa beats the shit out of Ridge Holland backstage uh, for kind of eyeing him up ever, and then Sheamus is like, "Yo, I'll give him a bleeding fight, my you know." It's weird too because I think Solo walked yeah, out he's... the way Sheamus came from too, and it's like, why do they do that? Like you just walk past each other, like is what it looks like right. on TV. It's fucking stupid, right. but yeah, didn't he say bloody like eighty fucking? Yeah, guys. he said bleeding. You're gonna have a bloody he said bleed. Match with me, no, he said you're gonna have a bleeding bleed fight. Bleeding match. Yeah, I'll give you a bleeding. You have a match bleeding match with me. You're bleeding. Yeah, you're bleeding faster. You're gonna have a bleeding match with me. You're bleeding fuck. And like he storms out there, grabs a mic, and then like cuts a promo at the ring with no one in it. And he's like talking to the crowd, but he's trying to say, Solo, I'll give you a bleeding fight. Why didn't he just look at the camera backstage and go, Solo, I know you, if you're in this building, someone play it back for him. I'll give you a bleeding fight. I'm headed to Adam Pierce's office right now. Why didn't he kick in Adam Pierce's door and go, I want a bleeding match with so- Sokoa? That whole thing was fucking really stupid. I thought yes. it was bad. Um, um, but anyway, <laughs> so then. <laughs> they just tried to set up the fucking main event, which was a great main event, and is two great guys. They were great, two great guys. Um, but they, it's like this was just silly. I felt this was really weird, but um. So then we move along to a match I was really looking forward to, and that's the WWE Women's Tag Championship Unification match for the undisputed Women's Tag Championship, unifying the WWE and NXT Women's Tag Championships. The NXT Women's Tag Championships, mind you, are also absorbed and are unified with the NXT UK Women's Championships as well, if I'm tag, if I'm yeah, not yeah. mistaken. Or either both, they yeah. either had their own tag belts or they were defended on both shows. So, well, yeah. So it's like how Piccolo fused with Nail and then <laughs> Piccolo fused with Kami. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, so... Yeah, uh, Ronda no, Rousey no. and Shayna Baszler take on Alba Fire and uh, Isla Dawn, and uh, all these girls are really over with me. I know the witches are over with you, and uh, this is a great match. And I just want to say that uh, Rousey 
really has been putting these girls over and like helping get them over and giving them a bit of a rub, making them look really good, giving her body, giving herself up and trying to do her best. And she is what she said she was. And she is trying to elevate this division. Um, There's a little schmoz at the end here. uh, But what did you think of this match, Airline? Yeah, I was going to say, man, how good was this fucking match for like, I I was shitting at Ronda a month ago yeah. at the start of the pod. And like, she, yeah, she, she's definitely like, like you said, she's been giving herself, you know, like, and she mm-hmm. doesn't have to, bro. You know what I'm right. saying? And that's what I didn't like about her. She was very selfish and shit, but she has been showing that, like, you know what I'm saying? She's about the egg division and like, you know, I guess she just kind of like grasped like, oh shit, if I like, you know, if I, if I work this, it makes me look better all the time. Oh, like, yeah. It, right. She's trained by Kendrick and Natty, bro. Dog. Kendrick and Natty trained her, bro. They taught her right. Yeah, man. Oh, God. So fucking the spooky shit, man. They got such good tag moves together and shit. Yeah. Oh. Um, and, and just the storytelling, man. Right. And I couldn't tell who was going to win, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I don't know. I kind of knew Ronda was going to win just from the, the fucking the the shit the conversations i've had and shit over the last handful of months i kind of i just know what they're doing already With um leading friend? up to mania but just from whoever man uh, there's lots of people who uh well just basically <laughs> like yeah ronda is fucking yeah it's her and shane at wrestlemania 40 that's what's gonna be they're gonna they're gonna build up this tag division and then they're gonna drop the belts to whoever is the cream of the crop daddy and then uh yeah, they're going to fight each other. Um, I love Katana Chance and uh, Carter. I'm going to fucking, even though they're not, weren't in this match. And I love Alba Fire and Al- Isla Dawn. And this just shows you at NXT, like, th- these are great call-ups. Like, I love these four women being called up. Keep them in teams. I think the women's tag division in WWE is slapping right now. I really do. Um, yeah. Continuing along. Oh, so after Raquel, so the whole time Raquel cringe fucking Rodriguez is on the outside fucking smiling oh, like a goofus. Hey, hey. Oh. Have you ever seen that family guy where uh, I think uh, fucking Brian the dog gets fake teeth, caps his teeth? <laughs> That's her. That's Raquel Rodriguez smiling. Um, so. Uh, no, no. Oh, God, I don't want to say it, bro, but you know who told her to do that? Who? Uh, <laughs> you know who. <laughs> yeah she doesn't have tits yeah. call Raquel in my office I got something to ask yeah, exactly. why don't you have tits where's your ass yeah. you don't have tits you don't have Hold an on, ass I, I know that. what she's gonna do she's gonna flex her back yeah yeah you're gonna smile and you're gonna flex your back sports entertainment yeah that's great shit pal that's great shit gal um so Raquel <laughs> is, uh, you know, she's smiling through this whole match for some fucking reason. She gets in the, the ring or whatever. She like kind of does this cringe. Oh, I'm going to walk away and be the bigger person. But then Rhonda and Shayna talk more shit to her. And then she's like, all right, comes in the ring. And then Liv shows up <laughs> and it's like. Nothing in my brain makes me go, oh, shit, Rhonda and Shane are in for it now. It's just like, <laughs> really? Like, it's just like, OK, you're a fucking you're, at work, um, you're like now that now that we're being exposed to Isla, Dawn and Alba Fire and we're being exposed to Katana, uh, Carter and Kate and Chance or pardon me if I got your names backwards. There's a lot of fucking uh, similar shit going on here. Yeah. But now that we're exposed to them and what they're doing. It's like, I don't give a fuck about what Liv and Raquel even more as a te- team because I didn't even like them as a team to begin with. And then just seeing like the level of what these two other new teams that just got called up can do compared to Liv and Raquel. It's like, I don't even want them in this picture right now, like to be honest, but that's just me. Um, yeah. Uh, what did you think of this? Are you excited Liv is back? I could give a shit less yeah. about Liv. I don't know, man. The newly no, unified the champs. Section. Rhonda and Baszler, congrats. This is uh this is awesome. This is history, whether people like it or not. Um, the Grayson Waller effect with pretty deadly. No, you're gonna shit on this, aren't you? No, uh, I liked this a lot. Awesome. This is a great segment, but yes. I just I just think that you have to so now take yourself out of it, take you and I out of it, and how much we enjoy Grayson Waller and Pretty Deadly. Um 
take us out of it and look at it objectively though let's say you're let's say you've just tuned into smackdown because you tune into smackdown every week and you don't watch nxt and you're not a mark on the internet right like a lot of the people who watch smackdown are let's just assume you're one of those people and then all of a sudden grayson's been on tv a couple weeks he hasn't he, they haven't really presented him right he's not hitting like he was hitting in nxt he just has his own talk show and then imagine you're about three weeks into that and then all of a sudden Pretty Deadly's on the show. Now, I love this and I was marking out and I, lo- I was sitting there giggling. I love this segment, but take you and I out of it. Be objective like a casual for a second. And you're watching this going, who the fuck are any of these guys and why the fuck do I care about any of them? I- Honestly, um, and because this wasn't Pretty Deadly's best shit we've ever seen from them. And this def- stuff definitely hasn't been Grayson Waller's best shit. Now, me, I get all the little inside whatevers. So I enjoy this. But other people, I could definitely see them being like, I don't who are like, it's not like Pretty Deadly on Miz TV, because at least in that segment, you know who the Miz is like a casual t- can tune in and know who the fuck the Miz is. You know, you've seen him on TV, you've seen him on whatever right he has his own reality shows he's or like bailey is like an over famous person with wrestling fans people don't really know who grayson waller is so then you have fucking these guys pretty deadly on their show and it's kind of like all right they're just not doing a good job of like facilitating this on smackdown i feel like smackdown's been a bit of a weaker show lately the last couple weeks and people say it's vince mcmahon's fingerprints all over it which um i mean it's always going to be vince mcmahon's fingerprints all over it Um, but I did like the, I did like this segment personally. And then it also led into a match with the street profits, which we'll get into, but what did you think of this segment? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I guess I, I, I went the complete opposite way, man. I thought this was uh Grayson's best Grayson effect yet. Um, okay. I don't know. I just like, so, so segment one, you know, he worked with a female segment two. He also worked with a female now that he had some guys out there. And then not that it's necessarily that it's just like, you know, with the girls, he's kind of like simping out and whatnot. And like here he was joking around and shit, you know, he, he opened the segment by saying, yes, ladies, I am looking for a green pot. Yeah, but yeah. you know that kind of pop on for me. Yeah, yeah, me too. I pop um, for that one. Yeah, 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 man. And pretty deadly was just going on about how they're the king's favorite tag team and whatnot. Yeah, and, and I don't know, man. It it was just like it was them just burying America the whole time, and it's just it was that old classic sports entertainment heat, you know, like fucking right. Oh, you know, bash the city you're in or the local football team, you know, the the people from out of country are bashing America, you know, and then. I really like when um, Grayson did that whole, um, honestly, guys. And then he goes, I'm not surprised. And he just, like, he had the crowd, like, sucked in for that second. They were all like, oh, is Grayson about to clown on him? No. Nope. And then he agreed with him. So just, I don't know, man. Yeah. I just, I thought Gr- Grayson shined a lot more in this segment, more than the, the previous other two. Uh, okay. Grayson yeah. Said. Yeah. This was my favorite of the three that uh, he's right, had sure. on SmackDown. Um, but I just, for like, some people might just be like, who the fuck are any of these guys? Because I just felt like the crowd wasn't super as like popping for the deadly shit the way I was. And usually when that happens, I realize I go, okay, I'm a Mark. So let's just think about the casual person, why they might not be going as hard as me, but the street profits did come out. And then, uh, we got into a pretty deadly street profits. Uh, and I loved this fucking match and I love these two teams and pretty deadly got the win and they're really if Vince's fingerprints, I think Vince <laughs> would geek geeks out for a gimmick like this. And I think this is why Massé yes. and Mansoir are gone because pretty deadly are. And I think Vince was just like, we can't have two of the same thing. You're both Wait. pretty. You're both deadly. Jericho. Vince, which one's I have your favorite? Yeah. Which one's your favorite? Which one am I sending to <laughs> yeah. AEW for that fucking Mark Tony? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, sure, bro. God damn it, you sidetracked it. What, what was the what's your thoughts on the match? <laughs> yeah, you fucked it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, it was a commentary moment. <laughs> I apologize. Uh <laughs> Wade Barrett was all like, Well, I'm pretty fucking handsome and I am one of the most beautiful men in London. And if they're more attractive than me, what does that say about them? And it was yeah, just like, dude. Oh shit. They're the, it's, it's the best commentary man. on SmackDown. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wade Barrett and uh, Michael Cole are definitely. I know they they bounce off each other really well, you know. Yeah, 
Um, after this, up next, we had uh, Charlotte Flair took on Lacey Evans. Yeah. Um, this is, man, what's going on with Lacey, bro? She's not even trying. Well, for, they're trying to turn her into Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, um, no, that's cool. No, no, no. And She's that's working cool. the gimmick, bro. Mm-hmm. Her in ring is fucking trash, dude. She's like, I don't know, man. I like, just don't think she trying. gets. I don't think she gets in ring enough, and I don't think. I think she genuinely doesn't give a shit. I think she makes a shitload of money doing her modeling stuff and her social media or whatever. And I think she does like being in the WWE, but I think the fans just go after her all the time. They're trying to cancel her is what they want. You see it all the time. She posts anything. Uh, I don't know. I think it's attractive. I think it's, I think she's hot, dude. I think she's hot, but it's like, whatever. Like they just don't like her opinions on things outside. Like, I I don't know, man. Um, What does it have to do with wrestling? It, It has nothing to do with it whatsoever. And it just, and it just is disappointing when fans can't just like, okay, here's a good heel who can job to people. But I agree with you. Like, I think she just doesn't get the reps in. And I think she just doesn't genuinely has this like malcontent for the fans where she just kind of phones it in and doesn't really give a fuck. Like, fuck these people. They really like, actually don't like me. You know, like, um, yeah, like you shouldn't have a bad match with Charlotte. Like Charlotte should be able to work you through a match and carry you. Yeah. You know? Unless you're That's- Nia Jax and you start fist fighting. Ooh. You start shooting at each other. Just kidding, but dude, Charlotte came out and she's, she's going to dripping. She's that, dripping, dripping, is- looking world champion. And then Asuka, Bro. aka Kana, as I call her on the show, comes out, jumps Flair, beats the fuck out of her, and I love that. You're a mark. And I'm excited for this match, and I love the direction. Like, they're just letting Asuka be Kana, bro. Like, she's just being crazy, wild, being the Joker, pretty much. And, uh... Yeah, fucking... Uh, a toe a No, man. Being a mark. And, uh... <laughs> no, dude. And you were just saying after Forbidden Door, you want to see more New Japan shit. There's nothing more... No, Asuka is the don't, most... Don't, don't, don't go Man, fuck you. You're, if you're <laughs> hating on Keiji Muto and Great Muda and, and that shit, because <laughs> no, that's all she's doing. She's just the female Muda, bro, and I'm not about to tolerate <laughs> disrespect no, for Asuka. Just... <laughs> okay, bro. Man, but it's okay to disrespect Bailey. Bro, uh, name man. what Bailey ain't lit right now. What is one thing she's done good since she's come back? What do you mean? So who's else? The only asses they're talking about right now are fucking Bailey's and fucking okay. Blue Sky but that's the thing, bro. The Here's the name. thing. Here's the thing. Like, I don't give a fuck about all these girls got nice asses. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't fucking sit there and dwell on Bailey's but, Bailey's fucking booty, bro. I don't. I don't care about that. It's like I'm talking about her goddamn wrestling. Man. Any girl could right, walk. Right. Oh, okay, let's get Kate Upton on Raw. She does that make her good? No, I don't give a fuck. I want to see good character shit. I want to see. Caden Carter and Katana Chance doing fucking good tag work is that, and that's what I'm trying to say. And Asuka's doing great work I, right now. She's fully healing. She's so, beating. She's being presented the way she should have been for a long time. So on the Bailey thing here, quick, you know, not to beat a dead horse. I'm just like, I feel like Bailey's whole thing is just getting heel sky over right now, and just like trying to create heat and just making a bigger pop. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they could be doing more with Bailey, but that just seems to be what Bailey is. One of those roles where yeah. he's getting the younger talent over it. Anyways, but back in this fucking match, man. Yeah. Speaking and of I don't dislike life, Bailey for the record. I do love her, um, but it's just come on, Chamon Lee, Chamon Lee. But yeah, um, so after the the little schmoz with uh, <laughs> with uh, Oscar, aka Kana, and um, sure. Jesus. Charlotte <laughs> we just got over we, we were moving on i had to trigger you one last time um after that yeah. we had uh sheamus we had the main event time did we go backstage sorry no yeah no before that we had bella or pierce and whatever the hell right. that segment was it's oh, basically so, what you said man she's going heel for sure yeah you know, is going heel it. and uh, yeah so uh and then we have sheamus versus solo sokoa in the main event this match oh god it was two uh big Heavy dude slapping so- Sokoa. Name someone who's been called up from NXT, placed in the main event, working all types of different guys, all these big money matches. Like, we haven't seen this since like the Hulk Hogan days. And I'm not even joking, bro. Like, Kevin, Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens, or no? Um, yeah, because he he just beat he just shock beat John Cena out of nowhere, yeah. and then he was right in the main event picture. 
Uh, so yeah, and then March, was yeah. he main event? No, but here's the thing though. Like, didn't didn't he stay no, I get in what NXT? You're saying, though. Because didn't he have that big match with John Cena, and then he kind of stayed in NXT a little bit longer, and then he kind of slowly worked his way up the card on Raw? I'm just saying, like, Solo got brought up. He's he's a big heater. He's with Roman. He doesn't do much, and then all of a sudden he's having great matches in the main event. Like, how many fucking shows has he main evented the last fucking couple years or, like, last year? No, no, Solo hasn't even been on the main roster for a year yet, I don't think. And look at all he's accomplished. This is some Kurt Angle shit. Like, I'm not even joking, so... So Kevin Owens was involved in the title picture um, right off the bat, but you're correct that he did stay in NXT a smidge longer there um, while he at the beginning of it. Um, but unbiasedly, I will say that Solo's definitely had a more successful start than Kevin Owens. And I was right. just trying to like give an example. No, no, that. you gave a great example, but wasn't Owens involved? Didn't Cena have the U.S. title though? He was involved in the U.S. title picture, not even the world title picture. Yeah, but what? I, ah, man, I'm, I'm sounding like such a fucking noob here, but I swear fucking Owens was like, he was gooning for someone right away, I thought. Uh, yeah, didn't, ah, he, didn't he gun for... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I think yeah. you're right. He was up there quick. But no, you are right, though, dude. Like, Solo is having such great success. Isn't He's been on up there for like nine months or some shit of the bloodline thing. But yeah, either oh, yeah, way, yeah, th- sure. this is some like old school, like when big boss man got called up to the WWF to fight Hogan, like this, that's what solo reminds me of. Like he's this big body who got called up and he's risen to the occasion. And he's literally like main eventing. He's a, he's going to be the one to beat Roman. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. He's the one to, to, to throne him when he finally does a, a face turn after like a year or two, it'll be like WrestleMania 41 or something. I could see him like doing some kind of Rikishi shit almost. You know, like super baby face. Yes, you that know? will come one day, yeah. bro. That will come. Yeah, one it day. will. It will for sure. Yeah, um, for but sure. anyways, this match, two big guys. I love both of these guys, and it ended in a no contest. Give me your thoughts, man. What'd you think? Battle of the Gargantuas. That's what yeah. this shit was. Um, I, I enjoyed how Sheamus was just selling that back kidney injury yep. the whole time, just like fucking Batman working a body part. You know, I don't. God, I hate. I do this podcast. We fucking we be saying the same shit every week, but it's just like it. It's like how we were marking out for selling. You know, it's it's a shame that I'm marking out for fucking and selling a fucking a body part the whole time. You know, it's like I should be popping over moves. You know, not yeah. psychology. But here we are, where just so much psychology is lacked right now. To that, I just pop over that shit. Exactly. Um, Solo murdered him though, bro. That was crushed him. He really put him over. Yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. Man. That barricade spot was nice then, too. Yes, for sure. Bro. The way yeah, it yeah, sounded yeah. was brutal. Dude, they were really laying it in. Um, I I popped when Sheamus. I don't. What's that? What's what's the move called where he like slaps him on the chest? Uh, the he calls or it like the, the beats big. of the battering drum or something like that. Something yeah, yeah, like okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just I popped for that man. Just because like solo, like he like he was in the right place at the right time and just like. Uh, it was kind of corny in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, oh, oh, you know, so, solo man. He's so good. Like, I don't get how he's just having these great of matches and his facials are great. His selling's great for his size. And like, what kind of guy he gets, what he's supposed to be doing. Like what he's doing is what Vince McMahon wanted Keith Lee to do. But Keith Lee couldn't figure that out. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wanted to wear wizard cloaks and do <laughs> fucking shooting star press <laughs> and shit. So, and I love Keith Lee, but God damn it. Like, this is what they wanted him to do is like act like the way Solo does. And like, I don't get how big guys don't get. Like, if you do that, Vince is going to make you really rich and really famous. Look at, look at at Seth Rollins. Like, like he fell in line and dropped off all his fucking indie mark bullshit that he had in his head. And he's now like the most. And he does all the, he does all the indie mark shit. He does all the moves. Rollins still does all the flips and the dives. He just does it. This is why I try and tell people, if you took the Bucks and Kenny Omega and you want to see them get the most over they've ever been in their careers, put them in WWE. Put them in WWE. No, dude. No, I'm never going to put them in WWE. You could put Kenny. Kenny could come over. Dude, Kenny in WWE would be so fucking over. He would sell so much merch and he would be so over, dude. Look at. But Just the tried. pacing, bro. Yeah, 
yeah, it, it would. We'll, we're about to get into uh, uh, for AEW and Forbidden yeah, Door yeah, a bit would. here in Kenny, but we're getting off yeah. track here. But I just, I always say it: <laughs> the elite would thrive, and Hangman too would thrive with WWE's pacing and knowledge and what they could impart mm. on these guys. Um, uh, so, I, yeah. I think only Kenny Omega. That's just my personal opinion, though. But getting back to SmackDown, so the Usos came out and literally did what. Fucking solo did the fucking Sheamus. You know, it was the opposite. Yeah. It was the Usos destroying him. Yeah, just laid beat his out. ass, laid him out. Um, solo and Roman, like both just laying flatter than shit for the Usos, like really putting them over too, you know, like they're just elevated. Yeah, both yeah, twins. Yeah. Like people used to not be able to tell the two apart and now they're both yeah, like yeah, stars, bro. Yeah. It's while they're still a team. It's so rare that it happens. Like all of yeah. all of the bloodline is yeah. It's just such greatness. For um, sure. I have man, we could almost say one of the only tag teams ever that where it's like the I don't know, like really what the Hardys, Edge and Christian. Because like I The Hardys I, felt really forced though. They felt really forced to that? be their own individual things whereas edge and christian are more up that alley but um yeah i would say i would say I just, like edge and christian are more successful as solos the hardys are more successful as solos but the usos are just becoming solos now sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no you're good bro well i guess fucking uh what, we got into collision now yeah so at? in dave Meltzer stars uh fuck. smackdown from louisiana or wherever the fuck they were from <laughs> <laughs> man it's fucking ugh, fuck Meltzer. <laughs> fucking asshole! I'm I'm blocked this block block the star rating. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, we're not gonna get <laughs> yeah. stars. Yeah. yeah, I'm for sure giving Collision and New Japan things stars. The New Japan things I'm actually giving eighty stars just because it has Japan in the name. Right. Um. So guys, let's uh, we're gonna breeze through Collision. We'll probably pause and talk about certain shit, but um, we're gonna definitely try and because Forbidden Door was like twelve <laughs> hours long, plan. bro. We got which we're going to go into depth on that more. So um, AEW Collision, uh, they were live from um, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. I love this announced team. Again, the aesthetic Saturday, 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 Saturday. Love it. Um, And Forbidden Door, this is the go-home show for Forbidden Door, which would be in the next night in the next building. And I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Um, After that punk show, the first collision, all the tickets start selling fucking everywhere. People are expecting to see punk now. Um, all the marks booing punk in Toronto, uh, they they came there to boo him, and that's goddamn right. Wrestling, this felt really awesome talking about the pay per view, but this collision, let's rip through it quick, man. Um, so the show starts out, and uh, you know, they're saying the Owen Hart tournament's gonna continue, and blah 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 blah. But the mystery partners revealed Hairline's favorite wrestler in the entire universe. Chris Jericho comes out and they reveal their mystery partner. All the great. marks were like, it's going to be Goldberg. It'll be great. But um, it was just Naito, which everybody we, knew. Cause if you can watch, we talk movie, about fucking, okay. We made it one week without Jericho, like being on the, like we, we were joking off pod. Like how long do you think until Jericho shows up? Or we might have even said it on pod. You said it on pod. You're like, <laughs> how long until Jericho shows up on collision? And it was like, we, we were like, not long. And then, boom <laughs> there he is dude yeah. the next one week later so <laughs> there's no one tougher and no one sexier than chris jericho minoru suzuki and sammy bro. i Fast. swear you're trolling this whole thing you're you're <laughs> ribbing me you've been ribbing me with this whole jericho shit the last couple weeks airline and i know you are but um so, so- hold on another thing i i have in my notes here jericho said uh winnipeg's cooler than toronto how do you feel about that? Can you confirm uh, or deny? Okay. In my life, I've lived in Toronto, and I lived in Brandon, Manitoba, which is near Winnipeg, and I've spent time in Winnipeg. Those two are tough. Oh, yeah. they're, they're toss-ups, man. I would have to go oh, – man, that's too hard of a question. I'm not I'm not getting into that. Yeah, I'm from, I literally wrote uh, that down yeah. in my notes. <laughs> so Swerve Strickland takes on uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Um, fucking Tanahashi's a legend. Swerve Strickland. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Listen, man, this is what I was talking to you about. When I was talking to you off the about this. Here's my problem, man. It's not believable with this. So, okay, Swerve 
got his ass beat by Orange Cassidy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And now the guy that Orange Cassidy fucking beat up is taking fucking Takahashi to the fucking limit. And Tanahashi. then I'm supposed to believe that. Ta- yeah, my bad. I'm, then Tanahashi is supposed to take MJF to the fucking limit. And it's all like, it's all just. No, they don't care about it. It's just anti psychology. It's just in a super indie fucking that's all they're trying to do like it's just for marks to pop at bro and uh, i did pop for this match these are two guys i love but tanahashi can't his whole style is like high fly flow the ace the and shit but he can't fucking um fly the way he used to and he's like getting into his hogan era and it's like god damn he's struggling he's like slipping off the ropes he did it at both events he's fucked now people will go he worked that into the match no he didn't bro he's getting fucking older and it's um you know, it's it is what it is, but I love to see him out there. But like, God damn it, man, Strickland is fucking so good, uh, and you and they're just using him to get other people over, man. And he just, I, I just wish he was in WWE right. with this character. You know, I really, really do. Or that they would yeah. just push him in AEW. He and him, it sh- this is the sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. This is the faction. It should be Strickland, Powerhouse Hob as his heater, Prince Nana as their manager. Why the fuck does he come out there with these other guys who like have nothing like Brian Cage and shit? Like, just get that the fuck out of here. Nana, Swerve and Hobbs, bro. That's the faction. What the fuck are we doing? Sorry, I'm going to start yelling. And Hiroshi Tanahashi know, beats like, Swerve, bro. Like, bro, it's like I said, I just I couldn't get invested in this. because I was like, oh, this is the guy that was just doing comedy shit with Orange Cassidy. So, like, how do I, you know, I'm not believing it. Uh, uh, we had Andrade El Idolo. Uh, take on Brody King. Uh, I like both of these guys. A lot of people on Twitter don't like Brody King, and they're like, he's the most overrated big man and all this shit. I I don't know about all that. I really do fuck with Brody King. I love him. I love his in-ring. I love his look. But Andrade, bro, he's been going next level these last couple of weeks. He's still he's selling his body part from last week still that he was selling in that match. So it's sort of like affected him this time. And he's just bringing the psychology. He's doing real Lucha Libre. And he fucking and bro, they're clearly setting up like Drillistico, Roosh, like his boys are going to show up and they're going to challenge like Black and King and Matthews for the trios titles. And we're going to see real six man where that shit was made famous in Mexico trios lucha libre versus like the house of black are awesome we just want it to be we're just so glad they're not going house rules and all this shit every week you notice how that's just disappeared all of a sudden you're not hearing about house rules on any dynamite or fucking collision bro and we just want normal good trios tag matches so i like this and i like the direction they're going the lights out shit is silly the spooky shit is silly i get that but just i love andrade's work and this was a pretty good match for me. Um, it was didn't like blow my fucking hair back, but it was a good match. What'd you think? So I liked Andrade's uh, high risk moonsault off the top rope down on the Burger King um, off of the top rope. You know that was <laughs> fucking sweet, bro. Um, I so like the whole thing. Okay, <sighs> the thing about Burger King. Yeah, where did that come he from? He can take those kind of bumps. He can he can take those kind of bumps. Why are you calling him Burger King? <laughs> <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> I got it off the drive. Oh God, dude, you're uh, fucking, you're such a cornet, Mark. Okay, I, 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 listen, I don't even want to hear it. Oh, dude, who were you going on about earlier? I can't even remember, but it was. Fucking I was going ridiculous. on about fucking Asuka and her work with Charlotte Flair, two of the top yo, females yo, yo, in listen, the industry. You're, you're talking about. You were calling you were calling Asuka some other name. You're all like, it's like when people. No, his name's Gunther. It's not fucking. It's not. No, I didn't say that. I was just making a joke. Going, Uh, aka Kana. She's doing her Kana gimmick in WWE. Oh god. No, I have to point it out for the marks because all the marks. If if she was doing Kana in AEW, they'd be like, finally, Kana in AEW. Do that. Like, there's probably marks who've made graphics that say. Remember when Oscar was gone for a while? There's probably marks if we go on Twitter who made Kana is all elite. They probably did that. So I have to put the fact over because no one's praising that WWE's got Kana. Where's all the fucking Joshi neckbeards going? Kana and WWE. See, this proves the biases. This is all I'm doing. This is a social experiment, hairline. <laughs> no, I, I got you now. <laughs> You're Let's right. Fucking go. She's PWT. Subscribe, bitches. 
You'll only hear the shit on PWT. Ain't nobody fucking <laughs> no, this type anyways, of shit man, anywhere so, else. So that, like I was saying, the thing about Burger King is he can properly take these bumps from Andrade. You know, and like I don't. So like, okay, if he was to do this dive off onto that cut, you know what I'm saying? I'd be kind of worried about it. You know, because like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're so what, why what do you what do you have against these guys? You don't like Buddy Matthews? Not is there anything wrong with Buddy Matthews? He's just a fucking cuck. You know, and that's what it is. Listen, I don't think shame. It's twenty twenty three. Would you so dump your girl on, on the notion of like, you know, uh Buddy Matthews being a cuck, um, according to, to Harold, <laughs> not Phil, Buddy. I love you. Um oh, hey. would you oh, wow, would yeah, you wow, wow. Hold on, listen, every post is we. And this is fucking, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> now this one's, hey, now. Yeah, now, now, yeah, yeah, now you're all like, fuck him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't stand by, we don't share all the same opinions, folks. If you listen to this show, you don't. Oh, man. So, would you, um, if Rhea Ripley was your girlfriend, like, let's say, like, whatever, Fantasyland, would you dump your right. girl if she was doing that shit on TV with, like, Dom, and you're on, like, another wrestling no. program? No. You'd be cool with it. No, first off, I sure as fuck wouldn't be comedy not her post, you know, like fucking. I, and, uh, that, so, that's why so, I'm making fun of them. Bro. Right. Okay. Like, that's, that's what I was getting at. Okay. 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 Um, I just wanted to, like, I was I'm just not, like, listen, okay, I, what? So, what do you consider, okay. like, why is it cuck? Because you're just laughing that, like, he comments under the post. And so you're just kind of trolling. Yeah. 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 Because funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's just, yeah. he's, yeah. Yeah. He's being a baby about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, dog, right. okay. I'm not trying to fucking, like, fucking break kayfabe or anything but it's like it's like dating a fucking only fans girl or dating a stripper you know what i'm saying and that kind of work it just takes trust and communication and shit you know so, so it's all like i yeah, don't know man, all he's i don't think that shit ever works out there. in the end bro <laughs> yeah, yeah, Yo. right you yeah, yeah yeah no i'm just trying to give an example though you know right. what I'm saying? he's more or less just projecting insecurities when he and comments on the there wrong like that. no i agree fully i agree fully i got the cuck thing from that fucking acclaim bro that's where I got it. I think that I. Oh, that's right. That's what he said too. Hey, that's what he said to Buddy Matthews. Yeah, yeah, that's Call him a fucking yeah. cock, dude. Yeah, that's, the, the, the acclaimed yeah, are savage. Yeah. We love them so much over here on PW2. Yeah. Um. Also, I think Buddy Matthews would beat the living li- life the the living life out of uh fucking uh Dominic Mysterio too. So I don't think yeah, Dominic would cross the line. And me. So, yeah. so it's not, <laughs> yeah. he, yeah, yeah. Dude. he's big body as fuck. Yeah, he's yeah, big he body, man. Body. Uh, I'm gonna put you yeah, guys over. I, I love House of Black. I love Brody King. Um, I love Alistair Black, and I love Julia Hart, and I love uh Buddy Matthews. I think they're great. They're great. Um, up next we had speaking of big body, Willow Nightingale versus Nyla Rose. Now, this match fucking sucked. Um, but I was actually really excited for it. I was like, dude. It's not often you get two like sizable women who can fire up and fucking really go at it in the ring. Um, t- even right. I was like, you don't see this in WWE even, you know, you never got like that, like a uh, Piper Niven versus Nia Jax. I think maybe we got that in like the Royal Rumble, but like, it's rare. Like you never got to see anyone size up awesome Kong really. Right. So um, it, these girls are both, bigger and i was like yo this will be a great i don't know we were just putting over sheamus and sokoa we like that big body shit bro you know um i was just putting over brody king so i thought this was gonna be like that and it just they're doing like shotgun drop kicks off the middle rope or whatever the fuck they're doing all this shit where i'm like you guys they just don't they just i don't know i didn't like this match whatsoever it's dog shit i thought but and then the outcast it was clunky yeah it was just I, that, it, that, I don't know, man. Like, Dyla Rose, like, I want to say she had ring rust, but isn't she, like, she wrestles on elevation and all that. Stuff. That shit's I know done, bro. Yeah, anymore. dark, dark and elevation. Right, but, yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, wasn't she, like, active on all the other shows? I just don't think like, they correct? use her all the time, bro. I just don't think that uh, they just, like, when's the last time you saw her on Dynamite or, or, or like, I don't see her on Rampage ever. This like she for, didn't yeah. she even come out with Marina Shafir? Like what the fuck? Where's she been? Like it's all yeah, no shit. It, it's just Tony doesn't know Tony Khan. Like doesn't know how to book fucking women. I swear to God, he doesn't know how to book like a division other than like his main nope. division or like whatever. But like he doesn't really ah whatever. I'm gonna get into the weeds. But I was yeah gonna, yeah yeah. 
like you said, the outcast came out and fucking the, the outcast. Back, they surround the ring and then Sky Blue runs out yeah. and then she has a smile on her face as she's running out. So it doesn't look yeah. serious at all. <laughs> no, and then she bro. tries to slide in the ring with a chair and, and the chair's bigger than her entire body. And she fucking botches sliding in the ring. And it was so fucking bad and convoluted and dumb. And it's just like, what? Like, we just had a match <laughs> with the schmas at the end. Um, wasn't there a schmas at the fucking After I don't birth. know. It's just there's too much schmas, isn't it? It's just like what the fuck is going on here? So up next, we had Powerhouse Hobbs take on Jeremy Prophet. Uh one of Hobbs's weaker squash matches. Uh, again, he should have killed the guy in literally like two minutes. It shouldn't have even had this many moves in it. And again, like all I'm saying, man, if you're gonna fucking have all these guys on your roster fucking job one with a name to him at least like let's progress this along you can't like there's it's like they're restarting with Hobbs for the third time you can't just restart with him the third time you gotta do something yep. now come on like it, they don't fucking it's just it's just it's really it stresses me out because I want these imagine Hobbs in WWE that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying he'd be NXT champion right now I, 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 I okay listen I can't tell you because this is my first time seeing them, and it was just a squash. Oh, game. yeah, and that's what I mean, dude. So, I, so I you never even, saw like, the promos. Dude, they were doing stuff. promos of him walking through the hood, his reel where he grew up going, this is the books of Hobbs, the book of Hobbs, and he's walking up in the bodega, and he's like, this is where my cousin got shot. I seen shit you would never imagine. I came up from blah, 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 and it was so good, and they just dropped it so he could be on QTV with QT Marshall doing a fake TMZ, like, oh, yeah, and now you're just seeing them on collision and you're like what the fuck is this and i'm like dude yeah man they just uh, 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 it felt like he was kind of like wardlow you know kind of like yes a, he's just, they just this is tony con he's like, oh it'll be great we'll just uh power bomb him five times and it'll be fucking like he just knows how to do one thing it's and I feel like I and was saying great. this before Jim Cornette was saying this. People always accuse us of, oh, Jim Cornette. It's our show, bitch. Shut the fuck up. But especially me. Yeah. But <laughs> going on me, though. that's you. They're going in on you. But with with that. Oh, being said, I thought it was we, though. Yeah. Jeez. Hairline. What the fuck? I thought it was we. Right. But when it comes to me saying this, I want to say, cause I listen to Jim Cornette a lot too. I want to say that I said this before Jim AEW is like a fucking kid. I'm probably the millionth. This is probably the most unoriginal take actually. So fuck everything. I just said the last minute. Yeah. It, it's, it's like Tony Khan books, like a fucking kid would book wrestling. It's like when I was in grade six, this is how I would have booked fucking wrestling talking with my friends. That's just, that's everyone's take because that's the most accurate way to fucking explain this booking. bro. Yeah. It's like me with my action nope. figures when I was a fucking in the seventh grade or whatever or this, I don't know what grade do you stop playing with toys? I was in, I was probably a little but older. I, I, think... <laughs> I, I was playing but with I, toys right now (laughs) not to like put myself over but i think even my fucking stupid booking would be a smidge bit better you know it would be right now it would be right now right it it would be right now if you and i sat there and 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 really were like okay we have we can't here's a billion dollars that we can't fuck up this is why it's like this guys it's because tony can fuck this money up because it's his money he can do what he wants with it there's never been a time in history even Vince in the early days, like he was on fucking, what do they say, on tooth and nail. He was ready to fucking collapse at, at such certain points. The company was going to go under. He's had to overcome, and there's all the promoters and bookers. Like it's not just their money. There's like other people's money at play here, and this is the first time where Tony Khan, like he can just play with all the money he wants. Like it's not Eric Bischoff playing with Turner's money. It's just Tony Khan can. Right. Yeah, the buck stops with him, and the problem is, is that. The Bucks also stop with him. <laughs> Just kidding. Boom. Boom. But um, yeah, so CMFT Ricky is what they wrote on this website. CMFT Ricky. CM Punk, <laughs> FTR, and Ricky Starks take on Bullet Club Gold and the Guns. I hope the Guns just join Bullet Club Gold. I think that would be fucking awesome. And they could be the... You know, yeah, the this, Guns are great. Dude, they're awesome. And they yeah, man, fit, they really they sell. fit they with sell. Juice and Jay. The way that Juice and Jay yeah. are kind of, I don't know. They just all fit together. They should just all be a group. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see them all hanging out, starting cocaine. That's very accurate. You always just For real, though. take it to an extreme. Well, like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, well, where do you think they got it? 
Yeah. So oh, you, got, you, got, you, you go through this match. Great. You go oh. into this match, and let's get into fucking uh, Forbidden Door. And what did you think of know, this man, match? Really actual, actual wrestling, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just them really working the hot, t- working for the hot tag the whole time. And, like, yeah, I, it's refreshing. You know, we don't see this in AEW, you know, yeah. unfortunately. So it's like when we do get it, it's kind of like a treat. And it was that, man. It was... It was really like the guns feeding themselves correctly, you know, fucking yeah, all of it, dude. You know, like there, there was the guys getting shit over. There was the guys fucking taking the bumps. You know, it's just it, <laughs> not to do my stereotypical thing, but they were working together. You know, yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was cool to see that because a lot of AEW is a pissing contest and like, oh, I need to get my shit in. So it was just cool to see teams trying to like work work and get the crowd you know invested right and i love this swerve finish because i thought the guns were in the match to take the pin you know like everybody probably did but i yeah. think they're beyond that point in aw now i think we got to start looking at them as they're one of the top teams like let's be real they work better than fucking the guns dude they're great those gun kids are great they're great billy gun taught them right man i i really enjoy this and uh i thought cm punk was really injured on the outside for a while there too um, by the looks of Forbidden, his yeah, match with Kojima. Yeah. yeah, he was working great. Like, it looked like he was fucking really hurt. And I was like, no, did he get hurt in this shit, like, already? But no, man. <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah, in yeah. great shape, dude. Um, So, overall, and then we got the final word. MJF makes his uh, collision debut, wrestling debut next week or some shit like that. Uh, he'll MJF will be on collision. So, good stuff. I don't know. I like yeah, collision yeah. better than dynamite, but this collision did like 533,000 people in the ratings though. Like they really, the ratings came out in this collision fucking shit the bed. Like they had really bad ratings. They Ooh. lost like, uh, they lost like, uh, 400,000 viewers from the debut show. Well, remember my original take, man, you know, where I said the first show would do good and then it would slowly decline. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. You know, the Meltzer agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I don't know, man. I'm enjoying this, you know, for the most Me too. Part. I, I, a lot of it is the same thing, but then there's a lot like, I don't know, the Andrade stuff. You know, oh God, I'm, I'm sorry for my low tangent. It's kind of like the bloodline. You know what I'm saying? The rest of SmackDown can suck as long as the bloodline. You know what I'm saying? So it's like as long as Andrade has something different and CM Punk does something, you know, like I guess I'm okay with the other filler shit, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know if you want to do Dave Meltzer stars, but we can just, we can get Yeah, into- we can do Dave on this. Um, in Dave Meltzer <laughs> stars, man, what did you give? Uh, and oh, sorry, quickly, what did you make of like Toronto just booing fucking Punk so hard? What did you make of that? Like they no, left, they're not in that. Chicago. I didn't, I didn't you didn't notice that the crowd that. Yeah. in collision, dude, they were booing him so hard, dude. Like, and in at Forbidden Door, yeah. too. Like, and he was, Punk was like playing heel pretty much because they were just booing him out of the fucking building, dude. Like, they leave Chicago. Like, in Chicago, he's getting cheered. He comes to, to Toronto and they're fucking well, booing him, man. They well, don't like him. It looks like I just got my answer about Jericho's question earlier on if Winnipeg's cooler than Toronto. And Winnipeg <laughs> is indeed cooler than Toronto. That's oh, all, I- fuck. all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Forbidden Door live from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I'm Excalibur. Along with me, Kevin Kelly. And uh, who was it again off the rip? With Taz. The- what, Taz? Oh, it was Taz, right. And then it switched to Shivani. No, no, this is why I'm confused. Ready? Because did you watch the kickoff? No. What is- show? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, no, I did not. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what am I going to add another hour onto this fucking event? That was um, five hours. So, Are yeah, I, wa- I watched the pre-show. And there was, of course, it was why? just filled with matches. Um, So... I'm going to go over that quickly, but on the commentary, they had some British guy or, and he was just, he, he's, he's like a new Japan English commentator, I guess. And some yeah, about yeah, his yeah, voice. No, it, Who is that? That's, that's the guy that took over for uh, Don. I liked. Yeah. He came in a, around COVID. Yeah. He's from the COVID era. I, I don't know his name, but yeah, I know who you're talking about. I'm sorry, guys. The comment yeah. section will tell. Yeah. Um, I, and, and I'm not shooting on this guy. I loved his information. And I loved, like, how he relayed it. But there's something about his goddamn voice that I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it was. It just irked me. Like, you know, I don't know what it was. He was on the pre-show for a couple matches. He was saying great shit. It was super informative. 
it got me hyped for New Japan, but it was just something about something about his voice. It was just like God. It was like he was like yeah, 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 doing like a yeah, South man, Park yeah. voice or something almost. It was like what the fuck. But um, but show you out, bro. Whoever you are, I'd love to have you on the show because you're you are awesome. I'd love to pick your brain. Um, anyway, you Stu Grace. I did. I bodied his voice. Yeah. I mean, he would probably call me my voice stupid and dumb and shitty too. So it's all good. Um, so Mogul Embassy versus Chaos uh, was was uh, the the first match. Okay. So they had RJ City and and um, what the fuck's her name? Renee Paquette. I was gonna call her Raquette. Doing Renee um, Moxley. Good. So they were doing like WWE pre-show goofy type shit. And it was, I like RJ city and I like Renee and they're in Canada and they're Canadians. So Canadians everywhere. What? Okay. So mogul embassy is, was Swerve Strickland, Khan and uh, Toa Leona and Brian cage. And they took on chaos, which is Beretta, Chuck Taylor, Rocky Romero and Desperado. So it's just the best friends (laughs) with another random luchador. Just kidding, but Desperado's awesome. But like, that's what it. If you yeah, watch Desperado's AEW great. week to week, that's what how it comes across, dude. And they just change their name depending, like, and you can't argue. Oh no, they're a part of chaos. I don't that, bro. You got to. You guys have to give leeway and and listen, bro. It is fucking dumb. Pick a gut. Say the best friends with Rocky Romero and this dude, and then in the match explain. They are known as chaos in Japan. And the reason they picked him is because in Japan, they're this, you like, you can't just change their names. And like all the time, it just really stresses me out. Another stupid name, the mogul embassy. They took the mogul affiliates and just merged them with the embassy faction for no fucking reason. For no reason. They had literally two guys, two big tatted up white guys fucking beating the shit out of Dustin Rhodes with cinder blocks and shit, trying to get them over. And then they just disappeared from television, never to be seen again. And fucking Swerve Strickland is now with Brian Cage and these guys. It just stresses me out. Swerve should be doing his own thing called the Mogul Affiliates, which they established on TV. And I don't know. Anyways, the Mogul Embassy won. It was a fucking finally Swerve gets a win, beat uh, Trent Beretta and those guys. Um, Up next, we had Billy Starks versus Athena. Now, is this New Japan versus AEW? Is, this is what I mean. Like, is this like I thought Athena's the what? Ring of Honor women's champion. So people yelling at me on Twitter, AEW exclusive. It has to be. Where, <laughs> where the fuck is Billy Starks? Has she ever been in New Japan? And then what the fuck is Athena, the Ring of Honor women's champion? Haven't seen her on AEW since she got signed. Like, I, I, Tony, it's just, oh, you would be great in the middle of this. What if we. And this is for the this is for the fucking Owen Hart women's tournament, at which continued. So um why for, can't that just be on TV? Like why does it gotta be on a pay-per-view? Because they just the match this card is overstuffed to the gills. It's one of Yeah. 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 Tony just the can't help himself. So then after that yeah, we bro. had Stu Grayson, Canadian, yeah. Taking on El Fantasmo, Canadian, yeah. Toronto, Ontario, Canada, yeah. And let me tell you, boot something, bud. Um, Trailer I don't know, man. Boys El Fantasmo is also Bullet Club four 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 life, four, and four, Stu Grayson four. has turned his back on the Dark Order, according to Excalibur. If you watch Ring of Honor, you'll know that the AEW faction Dark Order. <laughs> Stu Grayson turned his back on them, you know, on this New Japan show. Why? Exclusive AEW is- feuds. Exclusive. It's an AEW exclusive. That's what they told you. They did. Ah, <laughs> no. they um, tell you that. This is a good match, though. I like these guys, but it wasn't like either of their best work we've ever seen. To end. Which one is, is you're talking about fucking Pizzeria Udo's egg <laughs> partner? You you can't help yourself. I can't help about. myself. You can't help yourself. Yes, for sure. There's no Stu Grayson is Stu here. Dose. Is that- the Super Smash Bros. Yes, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, Stu Dose. And they were part of the Dark Order. Stu Grayson silently is another one of these guys who got released from AW. They just didn't sign him again. And then they brought him back again. Oh. And then all of a sudden he's in Ring of, of Honor. And he's one of these guys where, like, dude, you could push him as a single or just push the Smash Bros. 
and like as a team like i don't get what the fuck we're doing but and the fact dark order is still a thing i get it brody lee r.i.p dude bro hairline knows there's brody lee the wyatt's shield that shit got me back into wwe when i was really not into it i will never brody lee to me when he came to fucking AEW and when he squashed cody dude no one was putting that over more than me i get it but disband the team okay like disband this dark order shit set up a junior heavyweight division or something get rid of these fucking goofy belts that don't mean shit it later in the show jungle boy in the ftw belt bro no one gives a fuck about like, God damn it. It's just such a dude playing with his action figures type shit. But anyways, um, yeah, man. the last match on the, the pre-show, I- I'm going too long on the pre-show. The last match on the pre-show, United Empire versus Los and Grenoble de Japon. Um, Kyle Fletcher and TJP and Jeff Cobb representing United Empire took on LAJ's Bushi, Takahashi, and Shingo Takagi. Now, Takahashi... Bushi and Takagi are all big fucking names in Japan. They're on the pre-show. Apparently, uh, Takagi came out and was like this, like afterwards, like today or the other day was like, yo, it's bullshit. I was on the fucking pre-show or something like that. But whatever. Uh, and Takahashi's like oh, over. Man, shit. what a mark. <laughs> ta- Takahashi, though, the ticking time bomb. He's Did great. He get paid. Yes. He get- yeah. Yeah. All of them are great. Yeah, man. Yeah. And and Takahashi's ja- fucking awesome. Yeah, and so uh, uh, they won. The Japan team won. And TJP was in this match. He's part of Will Ospreay's faction in Japan uh, with Kyle Fletcher and Jeff Cobb. So it's TJP, Jeff Cobb, and Kyle Fletcher. That's a good – I like that lineup. This is a good match, but it wasn't like – it didn't slap that hard, but but like in a good way, bro. It was like – it was like – um. They weren't burying the lead. We talk about it all the time. Like, if you put someone in a ta- through a table in match one, then I don't give a fuck if you put someone through a table in match five. They This six man was to not shit on what was to come on the rest of the show. So I appreciated that, and Japan gets a win. There you go. So Strickland gets a win. J- New Japan gets a win. Uh, El Fantasmo gets a win. So, like, Team New Japan, I guess we'll say. And uh, Athena got a win as well on the pre-show. So let's get into the Ooh. pay-per-view. MJF takes on Hiroshi Me. Tanahashi. The crowd's electric. Tons of motherfuckers. Almost a sellout. They had to open up all the seats. Crowd's hot as shit. MJF is wearing a fucking uh, a jacket that says New Japan is an indie fed. And like, I just love when he does shit like that. Um, yeah, and it, great heel. It's like I said. I'll let you dissect this, um, but before... Okay, where do we even yeah, start? So, so where do we start? Do you want to go through the match? We got to go through the match, obviously. Okay, so... No, I'm, I'm, I, I can't go through the match because I didn't watch the match, bro. I turned it off because I got so... It's probably the angriest I've gotten at AEW since fucking Brody dropped the belt to Cody. You know was it, was, was it because of uh, Bryce Remsburg? Yes, he... He me me too. MJF so say, fucking, save that for yeah, one man. second because because that's the same thing with yeah. me, you guys. And what PWT's doing it right now. People got so mad at us about our Aubrey Edwards videos, just pointing it out. Guess what? Bryce Remsburg is a million times worse than Aubrey. I don't give yeah, a fuck. Yeah, I choose Aubrey say. over. Yeah, I would take yeah, Aubrey yeah, over Aubrey, Bryce any day. Anymore? Yeah, uh, yeah, Aubrey, you're okay. He's My the dad. most egregious, <laughs> foul, and he fucking did a match with the Invisible Guys, bro. Fuck all of that shit. I got no fucking. I'll take Kenny's fingers and dude's buttholes over fucking um invisible Stan, <laughs> invisible man shit. I just can't like. That's when you crossed over into Mark for your fucking selves. When you're a bunch of fucking neckbeards at an indie show chanting and fucking marking yeah, out geez, for yeah, Remsburg, inventing shit in his head. That is other level marking for yourself and your own chance. You're a fan, bro. Fuck, like that's crazy. Um. Anyways, so to get bring it back to this. So hairline literally threw his phone, but before that, okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, I picked up my phone and I threw it, bro. I was. MJF uh, carried this I match. Arranged now. It's MJF carried this match. It's exactly what I said about Tanahashi go um going into or in the collision match with swerve tanahashi's just like his whole thing's he's a high flyer but he's getting like in his hogan age in his hogan era where he can't be doing that same type of shit and uh it's i don't know man he's a little clunky this wasn't the best match ever but i love both of these guys and this is a good match for 
um, MJF to win and just like cheat over and like, uh, I don't know. I look at this as like MJF establishing himself as one of these like international guys. Like, you know, uh, I just like his, his character work. Like, Oh, I'm not going to do that match. Like that's indie Mark shit and I'm not doing it. And then he do- has to do it. And then he cheats to win. Now, whatever we can go through all the moves. Um, the crowd was just chanting a fucking he's a coward. All the shit. Torontoans and New Yorkians don't always get along either. They're very close to each other. And of course, um, MJF from Long Island. And how do I explain this? Uh, let's just get into the finish. I don't want to go over moves and shit. The diamond ring comes into play as it does, as it should, and especially like. MJF showing that respect for a guy like Tanahashi, like, no, I'm gonna knock you out with the fucking diamond ring. We both know I'm going over, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat to do it, bro. You know, I'm not just gonna tap you out with a fucking arm bar. The diamond ring comes into play. All the Bryce Remsburg shit is this is what we want to get into. It's it's so fucking egregiously bad. His overacting, overselling, looking at the crowd and pointing, oh, oh, did, was there a ring? Was there a ring? Pointing at his ring finger. Oh. And just the looking, like, confused. Why is he dropped? Like, quit trying to get yourself over. What the fuck are you doing? Go to Broadway. Be an actor. This is what you're doing. You, you're, you're, right. you're just, in, you, bro, this is worse than Aubrey Edwards, and I don't care what anyone says. This motherfucker is sitting there going, like, like the face. Like, he's dumbfounded to look over after he was all whatever and tanahashi's laid out after the ring shot and then he's looking at the crowd was it a ring then he's like oh "Uh," and then he slides out the ring no bitch raise the winner's hand check on the loser get the fuck out of the ring you're not there to pose to the crowd unless you're red shoes uno you're not allowed to do this type of shit you understand me but Red Shoes doesn't even do that shit. Man. Well, he you was know, like, on this card. Know. He was he was going to the crowd. He was pound he, they were chanting Red Shoes, Uno. And so he was like me, like he was kind of but then he refed the match. He didn't he then he stopped doing it. He did it at the beginning for a second and he wasn't like overacting. It's Red Shoes Uno. God damn it. That's like Earl Hebner of Japan. You know what I mean? You don't Bryce yeah, Remsburg, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not Earl Hebner. Um, you're not even D- Brian Hebner, you know, in my book. So <laughs> Well, it's just like all this shit would be acceptable if he was a worker, but he's not. He's a referee. He's supposed to be like I, I got dude, I don't know, man. I don't like this getting himself over shit and like I, okay. Way to just pull me out of the fucking match. Like in my notes, I wrote down, wow, man, fucking, this is really great pacing. This is great wrestling. And then I just get ripped out of it by a fucking arrest. Fucking, I get what you're saying, dude. It, it really pissed me <sighs> I mean, off. I'm frustrated. And, and when we yeah. messaged each other, Trash. like we were on the same wave. Like I was like, Trash. dude, Bryce Remsburg. And you were like, bro, I fucking almost punched my phone. You were like, I can't even believe this shit. Yeah, I picked it up and I threw my phone. Bryce Remsburg, cut it the fuck out and stop Stop with, like, the buy. Bi- like, uh, sorry. And then it's almost like you're an impartial, like, you're disgusted by MJF. And, huh, like, you're not us. You're not a fan. You're not a competitor. Your job is to be straight down the line. Let me use UFC for an example. UFC, there's a referee named Dan Mergoliata. And he always, like, makes faces and bees like, okay. Like, he just over puts himself to where it's almost like he's being biased. No one wants that in a ref. No one like cares about you fucking guys right. unless you're taking a bump or unless you're going to be like, wasn't Sylvain Grenier like a fake referee for a bit and then he joined La Resistance in WWE? Yeah, that's oh a deep God, cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a deep cut, oh, but like unless that's what you're doing, no, get you're the right. fuck out of here, you know? Like period, point blank, get the fuck out of here. So up next for the Owen Hart, Men's tournament quarterfinal. We had CM Punk versus Satoshi Kojima. Now, this is just like Kojima. Like a Mark Fantasy match. Like for me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like marking out for this. Like, fuck, dude. You know, I thought I, he was I was hoping he'd wrestle Kenta, honestly. I know people are like, oh, the finisher, but they've talked shit on each other. But then Kenta's like, I'm not doing that Mark shit. Kenta like pulled a literal MJF and was like, Yeah, I'm not doing that that mark shit i'm not wrestling punk but toronto hated fucking punk man they hated his guts um this match was fucking good dude i this was my probably my favorite match on the card i like the them just booing punk when he's trying to be like the bait it's like when john cena went to ecw one night stand like they just hated fucking punk 
and uh, he catered to it a little bit. Why? Or like a lot. Why he do was they hate him? A lot. Bro, because they hate him because. Well, yeah, because like when Just, punk when punk was doing yeah. the collision promo saying counterfeit bucks and all that, they were in Chicago. So when you take that shit on the road in Canada, like I don't fucking know, man. In Toronto, I I don't know. I haven't been there in years. I got a lot of family out there, but it's like I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe there's a talk some... with Toronto. That's not cool. Like I, this is what my if I had to take a guess, ready? I feel like a lot of people who went to that event are diehard New Japan whatever wrestling fans, of course. Um, are also like there's there is a lot of casual fans who just read like wrestling shit online but they don't watch it all the time and so i like yeah i think a lot of casuals came and you have to think about this what have they all been reading like if you look up wrestling news oh, like, yeah. let's say you want to stay yeah, up to date it's Meltzer. yeah that cm punk is fucking yeah you know lucifer so you're going to yeah you're going to fucking hate them, man. And that's just what it is. It's just the media, the general people who don't have time. They work a nine to five. They're not invested like you or me, but they still want to go see a good show and like wrestling. And you know, like it's, it's fucking, they're just look, they're just seeing like Meltzer and shit. Um, so that's my guess, but either way, um, I just, I just liked this match. Probably one of my favorites on the fucking show, dude. Um, what were your thoughts on it? Punk right. wins with the go to sleep so, and shit. How hard do you think Eddie Kingston popped <laughs> when Kojima started doing those chops? <laughs> he had punk in the corner. He was doing the... <laughs> Here's the Eddie thing Kojima, Kojima does them like good and believable, and Punk was selling them really good. When Kingston does them, I'm sorry, man. He doesn't have like the speed that Kojima does, even in his <laughs> <older> age. <laughs> Like Kojima lays them in when Eddie does it, he's he's yeah. just like touching you slowly almost. It's like uh, so. so. How hard do you think he was marking out? Like for sure, jumping up and down, right? <laughs> Probably, like, dude. Probably. He had to be, bro. Uh, okay, I this match wasn't over with me, bro. Um, I thought it was a horrible ass elbow drop and an even worse goal to sleep. You know, I don't know. I I was talking to you about this off pod. I don't know if. It, there was just incorrect posting, but it just like I, the go to sleep just wasn't smooth. Oh yeah, opinion. let's talk about Kojima's like elbow drop to the dick. How'd you like that? Yeah, uh, that was a uh, kind of a botch, but I thought it was funny. But the ref should have been like more in that. What the fuck? That being said, though, Punk then hit an elbow drop that was super good after. I didn't. I thought it was fucking awful, bro. You thought that, oh, dude? I thought that elbow drop looked so good, awful. and then and then the go to sleep really was whatever, this. right? I wa I watched it twice, bro. It was a fucking, it was an awful fucking elbow drop. Like the, just because like he hyped it up, because like the the way they did it was like, oh, he's doing the elbow drop, my god! And then it was just an ass looking elbow drop. But obviously, wow, what do you I want him to fucking Kyrie Sane? And I want I don't like I get it, man. He's just protecting himself and he's protecting the guy. He's Kojima, bro. Yeah, and, dude. And it's, and it's and it's and it's not even that I want him to Kyrie Zane. Like that's a little. I definitely don't need him to fucking You want him to do the Johnny Mundo 450 elbow? <laughs> no, I just, I want him to fucking, fucking make his move fucking look good. Not fucking, I don't, uh, I'm just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm suddenly team elite. You know what I'm saying? But I want him to fucking lay his fucking skin in, Bro, know? this guy's such a bandwagoner. Chat of uh, comments. Is hairline a bandwagoner? Let, let me know in the foot. <laughs> All of a sudden, he likes no. Jericho. All of a sudden, he's Team Elite. What the fuck happened? No, I, what the fuck? I'm, is I'm not on? team. I'm not Team Elite. I'm just saying, like they're they're like they're right on that end. Like, lay your fucking shit in, bro. You know. So I, up just, next, listen, oh, go listen, ahead. I for sure. Hold on, listen. You know, like you've known me for like what almost ten years now. You yeah, know, I years. fucking love CM Punk. It's, it's not like I want to be fucking telling you I didn't like a CM Punk, thing. but like you said, man. I, I can't be biased with this shit, you know. Like, dude, it's just the fact that I had to, like, it was so bad I had to rewind it to make sure. You know what I'm saying? I was all like, "What did that just fucking happen, bro?" This but yeah, shit, I'm not gonna shit, do that all. Yeah, this shit reminded me of like, <sighs> I don't know, man. Like old wrestling tapes I'd watch and shit of like, yeah, 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 dude, Hogan in Japan and shit. Yes, I keep yes, going yes, back yes, to that, yes. but it's like, it, it, it's like you know, you no, watch sure. like a wrestler in WWF, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you go and you see some shit that happened before, or like they go over to Japan and you're like, holy fuck, this this reminds me of that, even though they were in Canada. 
But this really just brought me back to like when Muda was in WCW, like I'm a Muda Mark. I've already talked about him too, but that, that this was just seeing Punk and Kojima in there made me go, fuck yeah, dude. Like Punk will be awesome when he inevitably goes back to WWE <laughs> before his final yeah, retirement. But I don't know. This was cool, man. I like that he can do this now. Things like this. This is why AEW is important, folks. For the wrestling business, um, but then this next yeah, match yeah. is this right. next match is why AEW is uh, can be a detriment to the wrestling business. Daniel Garcia, oh, oh Orange Cassidy, Katsuyori Shibata, and Zack Saber Jr. in an international championship okay. match. Um, of course, Orange Cassidy w- beats Shibata and Saber in one match. <laughs> and, um, yeah, no shit. Uh, Daniel Garcia doesn't have a belt, but is in this because Tony is a mark yeah. for his <laughs> fucking right. dance that people retweeted one day. Um, yeah. Like, what was Find that dance know. Garcia was doing? Like, why was that a thing that even happened on a sh- on the show? Like when they were punching. I don't know. It wasn't his. It wasn't his gimmick the first time I saw him. So I'm I'm also confused. Why was he? Why is he? Um. Why were they like punching him and then he no sold it and just did his little like dick wiggle jet dance? Like, I just don't get. Because a fucking mark for himself, dude. He doesn't because he doesn't care about the business, man. You know, he just cares about his little viral moment. So and guess what? Look, he got it. You're over here talking about it, you know. And like what? Yeah. Why was he in the match even when the other guys have belts and he doesn't? Yeah. Why was he in? The match? I don't like what was the build up to any of this anyways? Like, I don't like. They just was walked up to each other. It... back. They just all walked up to oh, yeah, each yeah, other yeah, backstage we and were like, we're going to fight. And it's ah, just like, yeah, you're right. Fuck. Uh, Why was... wasn't Samoa Joe on this card, like fighting Zack Sabre Jr. or something? Yeah, oh, my God. Right. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Samoa Joe's the ROH television champ. And then Zack Sabre Jr. is the, the New Japan television champ. And Zack Sabre Jr. was God. on ROH calling Samoa Joe Samoan Joseph. Why didn't they fight each other? Samoa Joseph. Samoan <laughs> Joseph. Like, how good is that, dude? And yeah, Saber, like, Saber and Shibata really saved this match other than, like, yeah. when, Sh- when Shibata sat down with Orange and they did, like, their slap shit, dude. I was oh. just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? I almost like- skipped it. I almost skipped it right there. That almost was enough for me to go, ah. God, but I didn't like you know. I, I fucking I like Zack Saber Jr. a lot. So like, and then ah. and this is why this is why Garcia was in the match. Even though Garcia took Mox to the limit and kick and whatever. Even though Garcia tapped Daniel Bryan out, submitted D- Daniel Bryanson, Brian Danielson. Pardon me. Um, even Daniel Bryanson. Even though he he did all these things, right. He's in this match to job to Cassidy. So Shibata hits the finish. So they tried to protect Saber, Shibata, and Orange, but Tony Khan just wanted to put Orange in a match <laughs> with Saber and Shibata oh, so to prove that these guys like he like I just don't I really You're man, trying to be you're trying to find logic and there is none. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I can't uh I I just don't you know, I don't want to get mad or start doing a Vince impression here. Um, up next, we had no Vince. Vince wouldn't even like what? Yeah, what? He's doing pay per views on Sunday. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and it's crazy too what because was it, AEW had done pay per views on Saturdays for a bit there too. They were trying that, and here's the thing: they just fucking fuck themselves out of even being able to do that by making this collision show because now that's always got to be there. So it's kind of strange. Oh they're my god, with, they did. Yeah, they're going with Sundays forever now. So they're the new, they're the new Fed, they're the new E WWE. So up next we had. You better not say Fed. You better they, not say Fed, dog. Yeah, up next uh, the <laughs> new IWGP heavyweight champion Sonata, a uh, million dollar Sonata, as I call him, taking on uh, Jungle yeah, Boy Jack bro. Perry with Hook. I, I have it so like just to fill in the listeners here quick. So basically, what happened here is when. Will Osprey, I'm a big Will Osprey, Mark. When he got injured, I stopped watching New Japan and I never got back into it just because of how life works and whatnot. But the last time I saw Sonata 
he was doing that whole skeleton gimmick and whatnot, you know. And so it's just it's it's crazy to see where he's at now. He's basically Okada, you know. Yeah, dude. <sighs> Again, AEW man, AEW can't help but to AEW. So when the match, okay, Jungle Boy comes down. Let's fucking go! Like, okay, no, just wave your hands and do your entrance. He's with Hook. Jungle Boy's been in so many different tag teams. You're my best friend. Oh, they're slowly building up to a Jungle Boy heel turn. Yeah, that's the most obvious shit ever. Like, blatantly obvious. Like, not bloodline obvious where there could be a swerve, but, like, blatantly obvious fucking turn coming. And not only that, Jungle Boy comes out wearing red and black lizard tights like Luchasaurus wears. <laughs> oh god no like you, you can't make this up like bro no. you just told no, no, everyone no, no, no. what you're gonna do no. like if you have one oh. ounce of nuance in ke- uh, uh. in your brain whatever chemical gives you nuance and story beat like storytelling off pod break kayfabe i'm a script writer it's my job i know i like i'm not trying to be like i pick up on this and other people don't but come on how I'm obvious was it he comes out with a fucking red like did no one notice this I didn't see shit about it on Twitter. I tweeted it out. No one liked it. What the fuck? You know, I'm pointing this shit out. Like, dude, he's wearing red. He's literally wearing Luchasaurus's fucking colors, bro. He's going to turn heel. colors, his guar outfit, yeah. And why the fuck Uh... is Hook even out there with him? Oh, we're best friends. Man, they had two tag matches. and And then Jungle Boy ditched him to do the whole four fillers angle. And then he just got back with Hook again. We're best friends. Where was Hook during the four fillers shit? It's fucking clown goofball storytelling, bro. Like it's it's like where the fuck do you guys get off even putting this shit on television? That's where it's just like just to just to have this is like a payoff with fucking I, I I don't I don't know. Oh, he heel turns on Hook, and we're supposed to care. Why the fuck do I care? Because I'm supposed to like Hook. Why? Because he was on Dark a bunch of times, you know. Like I oh he hasn't wrestled in two months, but I'm supposed to care about Hook. It's crazy. And someone will go, he wrestled last month. Okay, not the point. You know what I mean? It's just, and then the F, and then he looks at the FTW yeah, so- belt. Bro, who gives a fuck about the FTW belt? I know I'm jumping over the match, which was actually a pretty good match, even though I did fall asleep the first time watching it. I, halfway through, I, had to, yeah. I started it over when, when I woke up. Because um, <laughs> Jungle Boy's so fucking boring, man. He's so fucking boring, dude. I just, it's yeah. the same match. He does the same four so- fucking things. <laughs> Yeah, he does. I don't know, man. Yeah, so let's let's actually talk about this match, though. So, like, Go ahead. <clears throat> the whole thing is, I don't know, man. Like, I actually really enjoyed this match, and we were talking off out about this, and it's just fucked up that I like the Jungle Boy match. And here's the, I was just like trying to logically figure it out. And the whole thing is the rest of the fucking card. I was just watching the 80 man fucking tag team match with these 82 people versus the other 86 fucking people. Half of them are from Japan, the other half don't even wrestle on this fucking show. So it is what it is, man. It's just Sonata, like, really controlled this and kept the pacing of everything, you know? And it's just... I, it, I guess more or less a breath of fresh air during the fucking the chaos going on and whatnot. Right. Um, <laughs> on commentary, it was funny. Fucking Excalibur and fucking Taz were just all like, well, Jungle Boy doesn't even know who Sonata is. And it's like, yeah, I easily believe that fucking Jungle Boy... Doesn't pay attention to ref when you have any fucking clue who Sonata is. <laughs> and Sonata's like, I don't know who the fuck Jungle Boy is. That's what he said before the yeah, match. That was, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, they, and were just, like, they were just like being smarky about it. Well, they were all like, well, I don't think Jungle Boy knows who he is either. And it's like, I agree because Jungle Boy yeah. doesn't watch fucking tape or do anything like that. A fucking, well, they tried uh, to put over in the match. Pretty- they, tr- they tried to put over, though, oh, like, Jack, I know Jack Perry says, but you know he's a student of the game. Like I think they said that. You know no, he watched. No, he's tape. not. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I wrote that in my notes. I wrote he's not a student of the game. Yeah. God. This match though, like it was actually pretty decent. And again, it like even even though I got bored and fell asleep when I turned it on, fresh brained, it was uh when I when I went back and rewatched it, it was it still gave me that feel of like because I've been watching Jungle Boy and AEW for so long, I did feel that same thing i was feeling during the punk kojima match so i was like wow this is actually really cool like it gives me that i don't know commentary speaking of which i love when taz is serious so after jungle boy gloms fucking hook taz the crowd starts chanting taz 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 and taz actually gets serious there and i like serious fucking taz man and i liked 
this three man team. Yeah. Excalibur with Kelly with Taz. I feel like they all play off each other really well. And I like that they're doing the WWE thing kind of, and they're doing Kelly and Excalibur on the pay-per-views. And then you can just rotate the third man out throughout the event, bring Jim Rosso for the main event. Um, So Taz leaves and then Tony Schiavone joins us at the booth. Kelly. Uh, it's Tony. Going into the next match. And uh, Hairline, do you think they're going to team um, Jungle Boy back up with Luchasaurus and shit? And then Christian Cage? Yeah, will obviously have... from the yeah. shorts. Yeah. Jesus, you ruined it, bro. God. Shout out Sonata, though. Uh, like, you might it. make me watch New Japan again, like regularly again, you know, instead of just. No, we're watching. We're, no, we're watching New Japan for Will Asprey, bro. What the, I talked to you about this already. Jesus. Well, we'll get to it. Uh, Will Osprey wiped his ass with a Canadian flag, so he can go fuck himself two times. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably fucking heat forever, huh? Team Elite versus the Bomba Clot Club. Um, Team Elite consists of Hangman Adam Page, Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, a.k.a. the Hung Bucks, Eddie Kingston, and Satoshi, or pardon me, Tomohiro Ishii. For what reason? Ishii. Yeah, for you no, know, because he knows fucking Eddie Kingston, bro. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah, like He's I don't a know. Guy. Like what the fuck? I I don't get what's going on. They just mix their factions with people. Uh, again, exclusive yeah, it's, feud. It's an AEW exclusive feud. Like I just don't get. <laughs> this is all AEW except for all they did was add Ishii and fucking Umino into the match, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then when. Oh, it's New Japan. Like it's it's literally, uh, you just can't make this shit up. Their, their fans don't wait, even wait. get it because they argue shit in bad faith. That then it just Tony proves them wrong further, and they don't get that I'm the logical one going. No, like this is why I'm pointing this out because like let's follow the logic train here, and this is why we point these things out. It's like wh- yeah, why couldn't Kenny just have fought? To Keshta. Now I like they did the Osprey match here. You, me and you were both saying it was too early, but this was actually great. Yeah, way too great. early. I, I'm, I'm glad that they it did it. Great. And but did you gonna, eat? how are you feeling? It'll be real great. It'll be real great. The That's reason gonna... they did it now, though, was because they're gonna rush it for the trilogy at all in in London. That's I'm telling you right now, so that Osprey can be on that card because he uh, obviously wants to be on no, it, right? So. No, they can't. Dude, there's okay when's Wembley like a week like next week right it's in like August I want right. to say but like yeah dude no bro they cannot okay let me restart obviously I can see Tony Khan yes doing that but it's uh-huh. just like that's like no that's what they're doing I'm almost uh, certain of it I guess though this is the same company that has Orange Cassidy at uh, as ready at as many defenses as uh who was that? The female champion that you were you were marking out for? Jade Cargill. Yeah, doesn't aren't doesn't Jade Cargill and fucking Orange Cassidy have the same amount of uh, defenses now? Uh, I'm pretty fucking sure. Pretty close, man. I don't know. I don't know how you know that before I do, but, but, I'm but not... that, yeah, yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, <laughs> you're dropping. That, okay, Excalibur. Uh, you fucking. But, but where'd yeah. you learn that? Hanging out with Excalibur at the fucking <laughs> Shake Shack. <laughs> Well, okay, hold on though. Like she had a two year run, right? Of as yeah. champ. So, yep, yep, yep. As champ, man, for like yeah. two years, like yeah, so two like, and a half years. Somewhere. Her word. So her two year title defense is Orange Cassidy is already fucking. You know, he's already achieved that. So all I'm God. getting at is like full circle. I completely believe that we would get fucking Osprey versus Omega three already. Fuck. Yeah, I I believe it too. Um, or else they do Osprey and his two guys versus Kenny and the fucking Bucks and like uh you know because Osprey's got his little faction too. So maybe they do that and then they save the actual last yeah. final trilogy bout for like All Out or something. I don't fucking know, man. It's they're doing All Out a week after All In or something like that as well. So it's uh, it's just I don't know what yeah. the fuck. it's too much. Um. Nice. But what did you think about this match? We're getting off track here. Don uh, Don Callis is with Takeshita, and he was all over this show. Uh, Don what Callis, match are we talking about? 
we're talking about the Bumba Clack Club versus uh, the Elite. And so the BCC had Shota Umino yeah. and Kanosuke Takeshita Whoa. on their team. Takeshita is a good addition to the Bumba Clack Club, but Umino is just there. And I love Shota Umino, but it's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, why the fuck are you and Ishii even this goddamn match? <laughs> It just makes okay. no fucking hold sense, up, bro. Up. It makes no sense. So, no, no, no. Ishii, Ishii, like, at least, like, him and Eddie Kingston were, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they tried yeah. to portray it that they were homeless. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And they wrestled each other. <laughs> the guy whatever. that was hanging out with, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that was hanging out with the Bumba Clock Club, what the fuck was that? They were all like, oh, yeah, um, I can stick you in here. Yeah, um, yeah. Dude, I know Shota Umino to me. I'm like, yo, he's the next like Tanahashi type guy. That's how I look at him. And then he's just randomly yeah, dude, in this. He was awesome. He was yeah, awesome. I just don't get it. it. Yeah, and I like his gimmick. He's kind of like Goku from Dragon Ball, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know. And he's all colorful, and he's with yeah, the Bomba dude, Clack honestly, Club that are wearing all black and fucking. Yeah. And then they come out to that depressing music, <laughs> and Moxley comes out and he's walking what like fucking one of the fucking uh, T birds in uh, Greece. He's walk. I don't want to be hey, hey, hey. Uh, Nikki. I don't try Kenicky. to be cool, but uh, I, uh, I'm not trying to be cool, but uh, uh, oh, yeah, I do cool. I'm a screwdriver guy. Got a dude, screwdriver. What happened to Mox? Bro. Listen, we clown on Jericho, Doug, but Mox is fucking, oh, God, it's fucking John Moxley's fall from grace, bro. Oh, dude. God. Dude, he. I, I used to pop over him, dude, and now it's just like, bro, what? Yeah, dude, just that walk and the music. Like, dude, there's a – man, what what was that guy doing with that? <laughs> Jeez. And then Umino, yeah, is just uh, walking with them. Like, what the fuck, man? What are you doing with these guys, dude? Hanging out. Jesus. Yeah, it's um, like the goth kids and the that guy. He's, yeah, you know, I, I buy pot off these guys, so. Yeah, and, like, they how did they set cool. this up? Oh, we called a Japanese guy we know, too, Umino. What the fuck? Like, I, I don't know, Do man. you you know him? Who knows him? Box wrestles over there, like, fucking twice a year, you know? Yeah. This Bro, is- and then on top of it, Dude, on top of it, the Bucks oh, are in. Yeah, and I need to get... I, oh, my God. Okay, hold on. <laughs> we haven't even got yet. No, we didn't even get into the match yet. We're just roasting the premise of this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, the line of the is his. So, 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 okay. <laughs> the elite get, like, mild pops. So this, this is what I want to point out. The crowd is absolutely booing CM Punk to death, booing him into oblivion, uh, as uh, Shane Douglas would say, oblivion crate. And and um and then the the elite aren't getting huge pops either. Like the crowd was popping for everyone else yeah. way more than yeah, the yeah. elite. For Eddie. So yeah. where where did they all of this? Eddie. They were popping for the new Japan guys, the Ed, Eddie Kingston. They were popping for all of them way more. Where the fuck? Where the fuck did this all of this beef shit? Where did this help anybody? Now you guys all just have fucking go away heat. Maybe not go away heat, but like punk, they fucking hate him. And now the elite, you guys are like half loved now. Like, because half the people are like, okay, no, but even though punk's a dick, you guys should have been men about it. You know what I mean? You guys still should have wrestled each other and shit. Like, and it's just, and they just don't, they don't get how this just hurt everybody. Give us the match CMFTR versus the elite, but let them fucking do this in the ring, man. It's where it's got to be. Um, and I don't even think it's got to no, be Kenny. Keep Kenny away, away from, from that from shit. That Let man. Kenny do his own shit, and he's awesome. Kenny is. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Let you, it just be Hangman. Right. Keep hey, Kenny away. Kenny yeah. broke up the fight, saved the dog. A steel bit fucking Kenny. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Save the dog. Whatever, dude. He's a good guy. Apparently, he was trying to keep it chill and mend bridges. And he, I even seen him on Rene Paquette's podcast, and he was like. Yo, dude, he's like, I grew up playing sports my whole life. Like, locker rooms do this shit. They fucking fight, dude. Um, he's like, it's it's a physical sport. Like, it's what you signed up for, you know? Things, temper, tempers and egos are going to flare over. So he's being super chill about it. But then you have fucking... Uh, CM Punk was calling Hangman empty-headed fuck, and people are pointing out where Hangman was shoot-chopping Punk in the mouth, and let's see those guys go at it. Let's fucking see it, man. CMFTR versus the Hung Bucks or whatever they call each other. Let's fucking do it. Um. Up next, God. Tony Storm. How did, how did that even, man? Right. How is that Christian as fuck? We, we didn't even touch the match, bro. 
How is that Christian as fuck though? Really, we no didn't even touch the match. Man. Let's not. Let's okay. <laughs> right. Okay, hold on. What are you saying about Christian? Okay. How is any of that? How is okay? Isn't that their thing? Is we're Christian as fuck? Is we're that what their guys, thing is? I didn't. Know, going, I didn't know if that was their thing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, Christian AF. <laughs> I, I don't. I, 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 I didn't I, know if that. So embarrassing. I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this on pod. Yeah, back in the day, fucking, I used to watch the being the elite shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a I thing. still keep up with it. Yeah, I still yeah. keep up with it. Um, gross. So, but the hung bucks, like, how's that not Christian, dude? Like, they're not m- pastors at churches; they're just wrestlers, bro. You just do your thing. You can be Christian, and Chris Pratt's a Christian. He plays Super Mario. It doesn't mean he's a fucking. But like, man, no, don't don't take it personally. I'm just saying, like, I don't have to fucking brag about having a huge wang i just have a huge wang you know? yeah oh no, like no overcompensating yeah, 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 you know? I get, okay i get what you get it that yeah, that's yeah. my issue bro you know, I do, who's calling them the hung bucks like who started that they Is started that, that themselves bro for sure yeah it's like that comedian uh what's his name brendan schaub he was in the ufc and he tried interviewing w he like was pretending he was a wrestling fan for a while because he got an interview with ray mysterio in the miz but he's really just a goofball and he's only he, he's only a comedian because joe rogan like made him famous right and was like you should quit ufc and be a comedian and all of his jokes are just oh i got a big dig i got a big dig oh i got a big black dig like oh yeah big dig Oh, if I went to Singapore, I'd have a big dick. Like, it's all big dick jokes. And it's like, bro, like, it it makes me think you do not have, a, in fact, a big dick. So I get what you're saying about the fucking hung bucks. Yeah, you, know you I mean? shoot him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joel drone strike. Yeah, I'm saying God, this right now. Okay, I'm down with the, the homeless okay. cats on Reddit. I'll just throw put that out there. I'm down with the homeless <laughs> cats on Reddit. But anyway, <laughs> someone might pick Ooh, that up. Who's someone might... Callis is fucking... Yeah, who's the, the comment section for sure. Da, who's Don Callis' new son? Yeah, man, who's the Japanese guy? His, name's, said, Takeshita. Bro, his said, name's Takeshita. I may have lost. Konosuke Takeshita. Yeah, yeah, okay. Takeshita was the most impressive part of this. He's the best. Happened. He's the best. And his heel turns yeah. great. Him and Don are great. They're great. Don't stick them in the Bomba Clack Club. Let them do their own thing. He's okay in that group. Honestly, he is. He's better. No, I kind of like him with the group. Yeah. They're kind of making the group better. Yeah, you know? with with yeah, the yeah, inclusion yeah, yeah, of right. those get, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Get rid of fucking useless and fucking replace him with fucking Don Callis' new son. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Don Callis said that in that <laughs> promo, man. He, he was like, I lost Kenny, but I gained a son. <laughs> and yeah, Takeshita. dude, all that shit's kind of weird, but it's kind of dumb. But I just like Takeshita, and he needs a mouthpiece. No, and yeah, yeah, and I've been telling you, though, like I've been putting t- – before you started on – Back on AW, I was like, Takeshita, man, he's good shit. You got to watch this kid. He's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's like, guys like him looks, and Roosh that he I He looks just... good standing there. Yeah. Um, like and he, he looks it, like he looks good in his leather jacket. You know what I'm it, saying? Well, yeah. Dallas is fucking right and, in his mouth. And his, yeah, and his yeah, work like is great, that, man. That's almost WWE shit. Dude, yeah, and his work is great, and he does like better flying knees and shit than than Omega and shit. I honestly think that Kenny's are so cheesy now. Like, I don't know if it's because he's in America now, where he's like, I'm not gonna fuck these guys up like we do in Japan, but like Kenny almost doesn't even touch the people with his knees anymore. Like, some of them he lays in. We'll get into that match later, but it's like they really got to do better camera angles if he's gonna not lay those shits in. If I was wrestling Kenny, I'd be like, I want you to knee me in the foot. I want you to fucking brain damage me with those knees, dude. Like, not literally, but yeah, they were just knee slapping. Oh, and then all this shit about like fucking uh, Kingston and Mox won't fight each other. Get out of here with that shit in the middle of this match. Like you guys won't fight. And then Kingston eats the super kicks for Mox. But then two minutes later, Kingston breaks up a pin attempt on his his own team. Where where the fuck are you? This isn't even storytelling. Do you know how I know? Because Listen. I'm trying to follow the story, and I'm sitting there going, what the fuck story are you guys trying to tell? Why Why didn't Mox just fight no. Kingston? Like, what the fuck's Bro. going on, you know? No, 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 I just, no. Or whatever. Like, let, let, I just don't get it. Let's go back to the fucking... No, let's go back to the fucking storytelling there. Fucking... He took the fucking shot for Mox, then he broke up the fucking tag, and then you're leaving out how Mox fucking did a fucking move to him right after that yeah. shit, bro. You fucking I, dumb. Dude, I hate this shit. Yeah, let's yeah. move up. let's move along here. Uh Tony Storm takes on uh, uh so Tony Storm's the AEW women's champion and she's taking on uh Willow Nightingale, the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Women's Champion. Shout it out. 
And I don't know, this match, they didn't have a shitload of time. This, again, is an AEW exclusive feud, as the Marks would fucking yell at me on Twitter. Um, but for it's on this card, because, yeah, yeah. She has a, because she has a new Japan belt. Well, so does Kenny. And what I tried to say was, why isn't Kenny fighting Kanosuke one-on-one in this pay-per-view? Fucking Marks. So, yeah, man, um, this match, I love both of these girls. Um, there was some rank shit. There's like fucking Death Valley drivers on the apron and all, like, I, I don't know. They kick Soraya. I love it. was awesome. Soraya was there in Toronto. That was sweet because um, there was no announcement yeah, of that or anything. Yeah. Ruby Soho's out there. The outcasts get more over with me what? every time. Tony Storm is hot as hey, shit. Dude. And I just like that. They're these girls are like the mean girls, but they're like the punk mean girls like they're. I don't know. I can't explain it. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're like the, how do you explain it? I, I don't even know, man. I just, I like this dynamic. I've been putting the outcasts over the whole time, this whole time. And, um, storm is getting better. I feel like Soraya and Ruby and storm are all really coming into like these characters right now. Like they're really start the spray paint <coughs> shit. So- I can do without it, but, and then, uh, we'll get into the controversy that followed this match. Cause there's been controversy following this match on Twitter after, which we'll get into, um, and online. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you, I'll, I'll sure, get you. Your... Right. Yeah. So, but this match, um, give me your thoughts on this match. And Tony storm did get the win with the storm zero. And, uh, after raking the eyes, good heel shit. And, um, I love both of these girls and Tony storm is starting to get over with me in her second title run here. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Paige was super entertaining on the outside. Um, I just I love all like the little yelling shit she does and just interacting with the crowd and all that. Uh, and then Ruby was trying to do it. Like Ruby was just kind of coming up corny when she yeah. would attempt to do it. Like, I, not to shit on Ruby though, you know. Like I get it, you know. Like it it works with the gimmick, but uh, I don't know. You don't need. Like it's kind of like what we say: if the one match does a table spot, the second match shouldn't do a table spot. It's like Ruby, you 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 just totally took away from Paige doing that because yeah, she's <laughs> Jeez, like learning how to be like a mean girl um, for the first time. You know, she's always been like a punk rocker type gimmick in a way, and now she's like learning how to be like that mean girl. Like they're trying to be like, yeah, like she well, does her hair a little sexier now. Do you notice that she does her makeup and like she tries? She's tr- it's like she's a mix of herself with a little of yeah. tony storm's influence on her and so yeah, she's new to this but give it time she's cu- yeah she's coming into ruby's coming into it i promise it's gonna get over with you the outcast will get and they're starting to you are admitting it right now but sorry go ahead go ahead yeah. so yeah, yeah yeah yeah. so tony storm's kind of starting to get over and you know and it's kind of i uh it, it's she's doing the sports entertainment shit you know that's what it is like she you know like the talking throughout the match and fucking just the slower page pace match wrestling um and basically as far as the moves basically what you shouted out the death valley driver under the apron it's a really sick fucking spot yeah. in the match um and i like the heel ending you know that was cool man yeah you know gotta love that any little like ah oh, that damn it ah oh, dress you know that kind of shit yeah uh, and um, so basically once the outcast got kicked out though i really thought the pacing of the match picked up and really you yeah. know so and I, yeah. I like i've been saying on almost all these willow night and guild matches is i've never really invested in it again and i wasn't re- necessarily invested in this one but you know yeah the outcast made it okay yeah yeah, so that's tweet or whatever, Twitter. Oh, yeah. So Willow Nightingale also did a really good moonsault. But um getting into the controversy, the the it, the Twitter, the Twitter and other mediums, like people on Reddit um posting like fuck Tony Storm, cancel her. There's literally people saying cancel her and shit. And it's because after the match, God. yeah. Are you ready for this airline? So after the match, um no. as, as as Tony Storm is walking back up the ramp. So she beats Willow Nightingale and she's walking up the ramp, like holding the belt up and she's healing on the fans with Soraya and and Soho and they're healing on the fans and they're fucking holding Tony Storm up, you know, like helping her and they're walking and Tony's looking at the ring, like chirping at the fans and chirping to her friends and chirping to Willow. And they're like, you did it. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, stupid bitch. And then she went, yeah, I beat you fat bitch. So she called her fat bitch. She called her stupid bitch and then called her fat bitch. Right. And people on Twitter are literally like, no, nah, we need to cancel Tony Storm for this. 
knowing Willow's a plus size girl and all, and it's like, man, you really don't think these girls don't talk to each other backstage. Like she's uh, healing. Her whole thing is she's an OnlyFans model and she's like a punk rocker chick and is too hot for everyone and fucking spanks her booty like like and fucking is like like kick like kicking ass, jumping chicks from behind, being mean girls, but like skipping school to smoke cigarettes in the bathroom fucking type chicks and like you don't get what they're doing like this is why you're invested you're mad at her how dare it's she call wrestling. her a fat bitch yeah you, we don't go right. oh let's the cancel heel her was a heel. like what the fuck the heel man? was healing Ugh. man I these and like oh knowing she's a plus around. size well what does okay. plus size mean uh, uh chubby well, what does chubby right. mean uh, uh fat like what the fuck are you guys so triggered about like Yes, is Willow Nightingale fat? Listen, she, I like big girls. Does that mean dog? she's I'm, ugly, bro? I, yeah, I ain't trying to fu- listen. I ain't trying to break fucking character or kayfabe and shit, dog. But some of us like big girls, dog. You know and, what I'm saying? Yeah, 2023, dog. Like, and is no, Willow that. Nightingale like what? ugly or anything? Fuck no, dude. I don't think so at all. No, dude. she's looking. She's hot, dog. Yeah, no, no, dude. She's super attractive. But so fucking, it's like what, the whole it's thing like, is what like the, the f- heel was healing. Yeah, dude. Like, come oh, on, she got man. Heat with me. Oh, and the other thing is, is that girls, girls will call each other fat bitch even when they're not fat dude it's what girls do oh yeah that's yeah all they do is talk shit that's why women don't like each other jesus they'll call each other slut Ah. when they're not even slutty or they'll call each other fat when they're not even fat because they know that that's like what hurts women the fucking most and she she's just being pro wrestling heel dude they're being the mean girls and they're literally and here's the other thing i tweeted out i went dude will osprey fake wanked his dick and tossed his his fake cum all over the crowd like four times. And you're mad that Tony Storm said fat bitch. Like, said fat. Yeah. It's just like, come on, man. You <laughs> yeah, fucking... there was kids. There was kids right there dressed up like Darby. <laughs> but we're mad about the fucking bad mood. About a about a girl about a girl's weight. Yeah. Okay, so off pod, I was talking about the next match, uh, Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay, and Hairline and I were talking about this off pod. Uh, before the show started and um this match okay we fucking loved it we're gonna put it over osprey's the shit except for he can kiss my fucking ass and kenny omega's the shit kenny omega um and here's the thing though dude Doug, listen. They st- just hold on Man. they stuffed in the whole canada's gonna riot i hate canada I have to come out with special military police in case a riot happens if I beat Kenny. I hate Canada. They just stuffed it all in there like the night of the pay-per-view. Where the fuck did he oh did he go on his Twitter and talk shit? Like, bro, you guys are fucking you don't get it. Like you can he was on dynamite. He did a run in and just hit Kenny out of nowhere. Dude, why didn't you have him? say oh i hate canada and they're gonna riot like build up to this shit you can't he was on rampage in a random six man will osprey he didn't even cut a promo or anything how the like and then all of a sudden the night of the pay-per-view before his entrance you go oh and osprey there's gonna be a riot if he wins in canada and he needs special forces and all this shit like it was so it's just like this is why people make fun of this shit it's just add last minute flying by the fucking seat of your pants, the seam of your pants, just figuring this shit out on the fly. They just invented that last minute. Like, what the fuck happened? So, I don't know what that shit was all about. I thought that was incredibly fucking dumb. I was like, what the fuck? Like, no. But he did have crazy heat with the fans, and he was j- fake jerking it on them, and he did the Shawn Michaels flag in the nose and the fucking all that goofy shit, wiped his ass with the flag. He, he, he mimicked Shawn Michaels in Canada. That's what he did. Um, with he wiped his his balls and ass with the flag the exact same way. He stuck it up his nose the exact same way Shawn Michaels did. So shout out HBK and shout out Will Osprey for that because that was dope. Um, and uh, yeah, man, uh, this match, dude. I'm sure you're gonna have very detailed shit. I will just say, uh, to me, it <laughs> got to a point where there uh, was really. there was too much. So, like, Kenny kicked yeah, him dude, on a one long. count of his own move yeah. that he's protected for so long. That really pissed me off. And then there was too many false finish kickouts, but they weren't even false finishes because you just knew he was going to kick out. There was, like, 17 times where the match could have ended. 
and they should have just ended it. Like, we don't need you to get like 40 million moves for it to officially end. Like, we don't need that. Any one of those devastating moves could have ended it, and then you would have protected. It's like you just buried the lead, and especially when this isn't the main event, and with the main event that there was, it undermined, I feel like, these matches undermined what was the main event and especially the style of match that was Danielson versus Okada, which we'll get into, but God damn it. Like if you're going to do every move ever invented to finish Kenny Omega, ha- fucking every screwy finish. And like the ref ejects Callus, and then Callus comes back out and it's just like, no, that's where a disqualification yeah, is supposed to happen. Like, yeah, it, why, so why did you send right. him out in the first place uh, if, it, if you're not going to enforce this rule? Right. They, in AEW, they just bury the refs. They have no logic. Ke- Kenny and Osprey are telling a great story, but it's just like, you don't have to... Why didn't he just finish Kenny with the one wing? He's going to win anyways. Just finish him. Like, it doesn't have to be all this Kenny. Like, we get it. Kenny's super strong, but we also know he's had to, like, rebuild his body to come back and he's had like we know what he's done especially on this type of pay-per-view like they just threw everything against the wall and this was a great match i won't lie i'm a mark i popped like fuck these two are so good together and hairline will break it down more and give me give me his thoughts but ultimately i just thought that it was um it was just too much at the end there like just finish him i didn't need 17 moves before the finish it just buried everything else that could possibly be done for the rest of the show and boy was there more show but hairline sorry go ahead yeah man so i was just super hyped fucking with the video package right off the bat you know um i'm so glad that he went back to doing the aerial assassin shit you know that was my favorite like i was saying man um i was super into new japan when it was Right when Will became the champ, and then he got injured right away. That was super unfortunate. Um, but but yeah, man. Um, so as far as this match, um, it was basically fucking Osprey was in control of the first half and whatnot. And that really, like, you know, I was like, oh man, I guess Kenny must be winning this because fucking, you know, he's letting fucking Will get all his shit in. Yeah. You know, and then Will had that little spot where he licked his blood and shit. Oh yeah, that was pretty entertaining. Yeah, the um, blood was yeah, good was for just, both I guys. Like did Mox blade? Did Mox blade? Yeah, he looked at the camera. No, yeah, yeah. I can't wow. believe it, right? Oh, so Mox actually let someone else do the blade job and then bury them. Yeah, Fuck yeah. So, yeah, someone dared him. You know what I'm saying? They said <laughs> that you can't go pay per view without fucking. And he was like, Look, man, yeah. I'm not trying to be too cool for school, but yeah, yeah, should be <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck yeah, Kaniki over here. Yeah. Jesus. Sorry, man. go ahead. Go ahead, Airline. No, but yeah, man. <laughs> so I really like when he uh loaded the fucking shooting star press. Um and then right right into that dude he did the Oscar brother, man. Um but that was the thing, you know, it's like, oh wow, like that should have put someone away and then, like, that was like fucking <laughs> 10 minutes into the match, bro. You know, then, like, mm-hmm. there was another 62 minutes after that. That's fucking yeah. 82 finishes, like, false finishes, like you said. So, and um, like, when, when Osprey dropped him on, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You go ahead. No, no, yeah. So, I was just gonna say back to that flag spot, bro. It's like he, so he ripped it off some guy, and then Kenny gave it back to like those kids in the, the fucking crowd. And it's like, man, what, what about the owner of that flag, bro? Like, because you know he's not going to go over there and go to that kid and be like, hey, that's mine. Or he might, you know, but it's Canada. Aren't you all polite and shit? So, dude, I, okay, listen. And why did Don come back? Why was that okay, dude? Um, I don't yeah. understand that shit. So, yeah, exactly, man. It's the same thing here. Like, what, like he should have been disqualified or something for that. Like, that was too, that was too much Um, to where I was like, dude. Well, like, I don't want to see a DQ in that, but it was, and then he hands the screwdriver. I don't know, man. It's just, why a screwdriver? Like, what's going on? So now Osprey's in the Blackpool Combat Club or whatever? Like, I don't get it. Um, It's all too much sometimes for me. Right. Uh, it's just like they were just trying to stack as much heat on the fucking Osprey as possible. All right, we'll give him down Callus. And on top of it, he'll be talking, oh, no, I'm doing it, right? All right, so here's the plan. We'll send, we'll send Dan Callis out there with him. And he'll also, he'll shoot on Brett. And he'll shoot on Jericho. Oh, 
God, just all that, man. Yeah. Do you have any last thoughts I don't on, know. That, I mean, on I, that match? I just, like, it was dumb that Kenny basically ruined his fucking finish here, you know? I just don't like that. Was all oh, but like I my, love Kenny when he hulks my, up and shit, bro. Like, he's such a fucking Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior type guy, dude. I'm telling you, he should, he needs to go to WWE. I'm telling you, man. But, like, so, why is the one way the angel is so fucking sacred if you can kick out of it at one at one because he's the yeah. one who does it he's the master i'm sure excalibur would explain that it's because he's the master and perfected the, the hold and no one else can do it quite oh, like okay. kenny omega so well, sorry. Since excalibur I guess um, it makes up sense. next we had sting darby allen and tatsuya naito everybody thought it was going to be naito. goldberg bro it's clearly going to be naito like come on and then they're taking on Jericho, Guevara, and Suzuki, the the Le Suzuki gods. And um, yep, bro, guys, the sexy Suzuki guys. This match was the shits. I'm just gonna <laughs> fucking no, get the fuck out of it, bro. Like, I am I sick know, of dude. this agenda. You shitting on the on no, the greatest no. fucking thing to ever happen. A no, hold no, on. No, I I mean oh. if stay if Sting and Jericho are gonna wrestle in London, which I I think they're gonna do, I'm all down for that. But uh, this was the shits, bro. I gotta be honest. I wasn't down at all. No. When Jericho was selling his Broke back his to take to get to reverse Naito's move, dude, and it was just <laughs> so obvious and bad. He's just feeding his back, like just standing there waiting for him and shit. It was so bad. There's so much bad things. <laughs> And like Suzuki <laughs> doing that pose, he like he's down to do goofy shit. We know that, but just <laughs> yeah, Suzuki, Suzuki totally breaks character and like does the most baby face shit ever. Yeah, I dude, want that and... shirt. It needs to be a shirt. Bro. And then Naito got the win. I mean, I don't know. Darby. So I had one Stina. huge complaint. I had a huge complaint about this match, and it's not anything necessarily about the wrestling, but it's like so. Sammy was laying outside of the ring. And it's like the little kids were all like, oh, Sammy, are you okay? And it's just the fact that we're at children asking the heel if they're okay. You know, it's like, wow, fucking wrestling's dead, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, it's it's just. So this match was whatever, dude. Uh, uh, whatever. If you're a Mark dude, Sting wore his Joker makeup again, if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, it was cool. Kevin Kelly also said this is the 80th meeting of Suzuki versus Naito. Ah, oh, damn it. 80, um, bro. Up next, uh, the main event. <laughs> you need to stop shooting on Jericho, dog. I'm over this shit. Mm -hmm. That needs the, to stop. The main event: Brian Danielson versus Katsuki <laughs> Okada, who is the best ever wrestler in the world. Now, when these two were coming out, I was having goosebumps. Danielson comes out to the fucking final countdown. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, that was cool, bro. Wow, 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 wow. That was awesome. Um, and I don't know, man. These two guys, two of my fucking favorites, like all time. But here's the problem: this match, after all the shit everyone saw all night, the type of match these two had just wasn't it. It didn't hit. Like if this was on way earlier in the night, this would have fucking hit. If they opened the show with this, this would have hit. But after we just saw Kenny take like seven thousand, like fucking, it was a WWE two K game, and he just took eighty thousand finishers to get pinned out. It just undermined like Danielson's technical fucking twisting up Okada, and he just tapped Okada out, and the fans weren't ready, and they kind of lost the fans halfway through because of the style of match. It's not that the work was bad; it's just right. this was not no, what yeah, the it's hype they. This was literally like. Who program? will be the best wrestler ever? Remember when WWE and COVID was like Edge versus Orton, the greatest match of all time. And they did that at WrestleMania and they did the greatest match ever. And people were like shitting on it. Like, oh, it's not the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what they did. This is their version of that. Here's the greatest of all time. This will determine. Right. And then it just fell flat as shit, bro. You know what I mean? So, uh, I it was don't like know. An exploding ring. And then Danielson snapped his arm like almost clean in half. It looks like uh, in the X-rays. Brie Bella was posting those, and yeah, he won't be around. He ain't gonna be there for All In in London unless he's on commentary or something. But uh, yeah, man, what did oh, you yeah, think of this dude, match? And he's for sure doing commentary. Yeah, he's for sure doing commentary. Bro. Yeah, him and Nigel McGuinness. Ah, 
No, he's going to come out when Max comes out. And he's just going to put over how good Max is, even though it's a fucking complete contradiction. Far, to speed. Yeah. This match, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we just fucking fuck Max. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Doug, I can't. <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, so, man, honestly, dude, I thought Okada was winning just because fucking Brian was in control almost the whole time and getting all his shit in, Doug, you know, and then next thing I know, they're fucking taking her home. So, like, honestly, I didn't notice that he injured himself, but I was like, wow, they're like, they must have been ran out of time or something here because, like, uh, this well, Brie Bella said he yet. wrestled, uh, his wife said he wrestled yeah, for 10, like minutes 10 minutes with the broken yeah, yeah. arm, so... I don't know. Apparently, they didn't go home that early. Oh, no, for sure. But, like, I'm just saying, like, the like a, after that Kenny Omega match, you know what I'm saying, like, it didn't just match the pace. Of, so, I, I watched Daniel Bryan give a speech after. And I watched this on YouTube and shit. And he said that's the first time he's came out to that song in over nine years, bro. So, yeah. He also, said, marks out he, there, he there also you said, name a fucking uh, company that's had this good of pay-per-views in a row. And it's like, bro. Double or nothing was your guys' uh, last pay per view. That was the biggest dog shit, horse shit pay per view ever yeah. in the history of wrestling. Almost like, so what the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? But um, yeah, shout out Danielson. I don't know, man. It just fell flat. Um, the highlight of the night, the MVP for me was Punk and Kojima. Man, that was that was the money match right there, in my opinion. What about you? Yeah, uh, the uh, the yeah. highlight and the MVP. That's what we'll do from now on because fuck Meltzer stars. What was the highlight and the MVP? Uh, Jericho and Jericho. Okay, so. fuck you. No, we have to do stars. That we can retire stars after. No, fuck okay. you. We can Dave retire Meltz- the stars after. <laughs> Dave Meltzer we have to stars. Do it one last time. Okay, what was your low light of the night? Let's let's also do low lights. For me, the low light was um that Jericho match. I think that was the low point for me. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch! Yeah, right. My, well, so you were more triggered by the Jericho match than that, than that referee's Tom Fool. Oh yeah, Ooh. sorry. No, you're right. Sorry, thank you. Because that was a good match. Besides Bryce Remsburg trying to get himself over, Bryce Dude, Remsburg I, was God, the low light for me. I skipped an MJF match, bro. Like if you check the fucking hairline Wikipedia, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna yeah. say skipped an MJF match. That's disgusting, bro. It's crazy. Um. Yeah. I don't know, man. It really pissed me off. Though. So that was your low light as well? That Bryce Remsburg spot? Yeah, they should have just fucking threw Jericho out there in a fucking referee. Fucking. Oh, my God. It was a lot better. But last star rating ever. Oh, Go man. First. And Dave Meltzer stars. Uh, minus five stars for uh, the Jericho six-man mistake. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> kidding, dude. that. <laughs> You know what, man? What? For the last one ever, for the sake of Dave, we'll go with the with the rating that just ruined it, that he started going downhill and losing credibility from six stars. Six Dave Meltzer stars for Forbidden Door. Might start watching New Japan again. Yeah. Bro, we're watching New Japan. Jesus. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna give it eight hundred and sixty two stars. <laughs> you hear that, it, Dave? Since they were, we're more alike Dave than you think, Dave. Dave said that's not enough stars. <laughs> His uh, star ratings apparently have been taking a while to come out, and people are like, oh, what's the holdup? <laughs> what is the holdup? He, he, he gives uh, the young buck 60 He's just stars. steady making excuses for, oh, you're just trashing punk. Ooh, I told you guys, schmarmily smiling, holding hands with Brian Alvarez. Oh, um, <laughs> all right, guys, that's our show, I think. Talk about this week's sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Like, the very handsome sponsors this week are the same handsome sponsors as the week before. Us. Check us out, man, everywhere. Um, our TikTok's bumping at Pro Wrestle Times on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, wherever. Um, check us out on YouTube at Pro Wrestle Times. Uh, you can actually do like youtube.com backslash at Pro Wrestle Times. That's why I always plug it that way, folks, um, in case you haven't caught on yet. Uh, that is a Send us an email at pro wrestle times at gmail.com and uh, we'll read it on the air and whether it's good or bad, I guess maybe we won't depends. Uh, depends how we feel that day. Check us out on uh, at pro wrestling clips, pro wrestle clips. Pardon me. Let me plug it fucking properly at pro wrestle clips um, on YouTube as well. That's more of our main channel. That's where we're more interactive. That's where we're, we're posting, you know, where we get the most traction. Um, and we just appreciate you guys so much, man. Like, we were like, dude, we want to hit 500 subs by the end of the summer. And we're on track to beat that. Um, and if we don't, it's all good. But we got you guys in the comments, man. We see you guys. 
saying, you know, we're on the road to 1K and you guys leave us so many good comments. Um, the Discord is coming in July. Yes, I'm making a Discord in July. And uh, yes, I'm fixing our Patreon. One tier, $5 Patreon. And we'll acknowledge you on the show. And man, we just love you all so much. New listeners, old listeners. We love you all the same. Um, our day ones, though, we really appreciate you guys because without y'all, man, you know, you helping us hit the algorithm and all that. Yeah, man, we just can't say we appreciate it enough. Um, Patreon.com backslash Pro Wrestle Times. We do want to get some teas going, but we don't want to start teasing teas unless we have the teas teed up. So, right. Need a couple Patreon subscribers. Yeah, you know, you got to sign up for the Patreon. It's about Chris Jericho. That sells itself. Jesus. Yeah. And you get early access to our shit. You can download our shit. You can download the artwork I make for the videos and all that. And uh, Yeah, man, leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you're listening on YouTube. If you're on Spotify and shit, just download us. We appreciate you guys. I don't think we're on Apple Music yet. I don't think that's ever going to happen, so fuck them. And uh, yeah, man, we just appreciate you guys so much. We didn't review Dark Side on this episode, but we will review Doink the Clown Dark Side. Don't worry, we are coming back with some Dark Side. Hey, the notes have been taken. That shit's crazy, bro. Dude, that Doink episode slaps. Yeah, are you happy with an episode now? I was, yeah, yeah so I've been happy the whole time, but this one really, like, really you know took it to the limit like the older episodes did you know this one hit me like uh, the bruiser episode like that kind of the crazy story of it so i don't know man it's all great shit it's great shit it's great uh <laughs> for this episode of pro wrestling podcast i am phil yeah these hairline yep yeah we do it yeah yeah that's right man i'm sorry yeah no, we're leaving no. it that's the sign up you fucked up yeah. you fucked up you fucked up you fucked up it's been a long fucking weekend of 82 fucking wrestling matches. Ugh. Thanks for listening, guys.